Welcome to the Theory of DFS podcast. I'm Jordan Cooper, aka Blender at Blender HD on Twitter, the co author of the Theory of Daily Fantasy Sports 15 hour audio DFS masterclass you can find at theoryofdfs.com. Out of all the episodes that I've had of this podcast, I, I, I'm most looking forward to this one, with, especially with Eric gone. He'll be back for NFL season. Don't worry about that. But uh, someone that uh, I, I, I don't want, I don't want to pump you up that much, Ed. But uh, <laughs> I, when I when I learned to play poker in the in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, I've probably I've probably read more of your work than anyone else from. No limit hold'em theory in practice. Small stakes hold'em. Small stakes no limit hold'em. Professional no limit hold'em. And now and now you're doing the sports betting with the the logic of sports betting, which I've read three times already. That I I to me I consider to be, yes, I'm not that immersed in the sports betting world as far as content is concerned. To be like the quintessential, I view in poker, like the quintessential works for poker at least. From like that mid two thousands period before was kind of like super system theory of poker, like obviously you could tell right. from the podcast and my course like a very, I very, I I must have learned how to play poker through two plus two publishing, to to, to some regard. I did for sure. Right, I, you did right. I was on the forums. Yep. I was a lurker, yep. but uh, and you've also done some work uh, writing some stuff for daily fantasy sports, uh, very analytical okay. game theory driven mind. So uh, I want to thank you for coming on. I I don't want to say that you're my mentor because you've never like, <laughs> but you know, it's not like you were a private coach or anything. But uh, when I started playing like seriously in 2002, 2003, obviously there was a big boom during that period. Right. Uh, I learned how to beat the games on party poker and poker stars. And, and then obviously the private games and the underground clubs in New York city Primarily from playing and then reading and then playing and then reading and kind of like, like that, that kind of mentality is why I do this podcast and made that audio course. And just like, you're not going to learn everything in 15 hours, but you're going to listen and then you're going to play and then you're going to listen again. And then you're just going to get better. Is, is, is that how you approached? Because in your writing, it's, it's very much like, this is not the type, these are not the types of books where. You read them once and then it's like, oh, now I know everything. I would go to the table and, and, and crush them. Well, so first of all, thanks for that. was quite the intro. Thank I, you. I want to pump you up as much it's, as possible. Well, I People it. in the I DFS space may, may not know you as as well right. yeah, as, I'm, other, I'm, pe- as I'm other people. Sort of behind the scenes or I don't know what I am, but yeah. Well, thank you. That I, I very much appreciate it and, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so, I mean, when I learned poker... That was definitely my approach. I mean, I learned poker from I learned I started playing in 2001 and uh you know, I bought the 2 plus 2 books. I bought Theory of Poker and you know, Hold'em Poker for Advanced Players and you know, the kind of old school books and that was 100% what I did. I put $100 on it was Ultimate Bet <laughs> and you know, I had my 2 plus 2 books and I would just read the book and play for a while. And, you know, I, I lost a, a couple of those buy-ins at first, uh, you know, and, um, you know, and then I found their forum and I started posting hands on the forum and it was just, it's just this, you know, like you described the iterative process where you just read and talk to people and play and read and talk to people and play. And then, you know, something you didn't understand before, you know, just clicks the next day and you're like, Oh, I get this now. And it's just, you know, over time, for sure. Right. I, I view the two plus two books very much as what I call conceptual learning. I think a lot of the poker works now are much more analytical based. Right. Like they're not very, they're, they're not very good for, I would say, new players. Uh, right. I think they're more, they're more geared towards if, if you, if you could beat the games in 2005, the work now, like will help you beat the games like the hardest games now, you could still go into the casino card room. I can guarantee right. you here in Louisville, across the river. If you if you learn if you learn from two thousand, if you're a good were a good player on two, in two thousand three, you could still beat the games, like the live games now for sure. But the, well, but the, but what I liked about yeah. theory of poker was that it wasn't it was not math. It wasn't heavy with math as far as numbers. But more very heavy with math right. as far as concepts of don't be so concerned about 
uh, knowing the odds of every draw, right. right? Exactly. Like just understanding the concept of just the simplest stuff of like, what is expected value? If right. you made this call a hundred percent of the time, how much money will you profit from doing so? If you made this, if they're bluffing 20% of the time and you could beat their hand 60% of the time, just thinking in that like kind of nonlinear method of thinking, if you could at least be directionally accurate, like yep. you're good. So, and now a lot of the work now with the solvers and stuff is like heavily, heavily right. analytical. And then once the, like I stopped playing poker professionally once like the HUD came in. Right. Like online. Like I, I always was more of a live poker player to begin with. Yeah, me uh, too. But, but the HUDs were full tilt. And once I got poker tracker and all that type of stuff, it's like, oh, my edge is gone because this is what I... This, this is right. I, I'm I'm able to estimate all this type of stuff at live card tables. That's right. that's what makes my edge. Now, right. if everyone has this information, how got, am I exploiting it? Now you've got people, you know, ten years younger than you and twice as smart as you, and with the huds and all this stuff. You know, they're playing ten tables. And, yeah, no, I for sure. I mean, and that was to me all, always the problem with online poker. I mean, so so what you said about like like my philosophy when writing a book is 100 percent what you just said. I try to take you know mathematical ideas and explain them in plain English, like in, in an understandable way without filling the book with a ton of equations. Right. So that's definitely my philosophy as far as like trying to teach the stuff. And, and I always kind of felt like this is always going to be good enough in live poker. Right. Because why do people come to play live poker? They come to hang out, drink a beer, you know, play a game with friends. I mean, that's why they're there. Is the, is the quality of player in live poker going to improve slowly over time? Sure. You know, but like fundamentally, it's the same reason like you go to the chess club, you know, chess clubs full of people rated 1200 and, you know, because they're just there to play chess and have fun. And it's kind of the same with live poker, whereas online poker is like this like battle of the fittest, like, you know, see who can jam as many tables in and like get the get the latest, you know, technological edge on on the next person. And, you know, to me, that was always that that was never why I got interested in, in this, in the first place. I mean, I just like games. I like playing games. That was what got me into it. And, you know, to me, you know, live poker has that, you know, playing a game feel, whereas, you know, man, online poker is like, <laughs> it's cutthroat. So, well, yeah. Well, that, that's one of the main reasons why well, I started playing uh, daily fantasy sports in October, 2015. Uh, obviously a little bit past like the boom period. I, I'm not an early, early adopter. Right. I mean, I was mostly watching soccer, so I wasn't, I, I wasn't watching baseball or football. I didn't see many of the ad blitz. Right. I mean, I got into it once Ethan Gate happened. It's, and it's funny. Yeah. Well, it, it's right. The scandal, like it made, oh, you yeah. got involved when the scandal became man's dream. But right. <laughs> the, the, the thing that stood out, it's, it, these are the things, these, these are the cornerstones of, of my daily fantasy sports play of that scandal. Uh, your and I'm going to talk about it. Your your article on uh, the McKinsey study. Yep. And the the article that you did about massively multi entry GPP play. Right. What that did to me is, I I saw I I heard on podcast DraftKings stuff. I I played fantasy sports way back in the day when I was really young in the 90s. I viewed it as like the back of the sporting news type of pick right. your players. Everyone so like. One person could win a million dollars and everything else is just, you're just trying to harvest email addresses, you know, like, like it's not, it's, it's a challenge thing and it's just for advertising. Like there's no, there's no game right. to it. Like, it's just, it's like, okay, uh, it's glorified sports betting with a probably ridiculous rake that no one could beat and it's whatever. Uh, right. All those things, all, all, all the stuff that I was looking up once I started getting involved in playing soccer DFS for fun was the... Oh, it's a game. It's it's like I'm I'm reading stuff and it's like oh this is very similar to poker, like the like all the concepts that I'm 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 seeing. Not obviously you could go to like content sites that had the picks and the plays and stuff, but that didn't talk about anything. Like I, I like there has to be a game. How do I beat other people? And right. the first thing that I thought of was this game is popular enough. Like I was new. I was brand new. Three months in, I'm like there there has to be a theory of daily fantasy sports. Like they're like, I can't see that it, there's all this advertising, all this. I found Jonathan Bales fantasy football for smart people stuff. And then has 
bits and pieces of kind of game theory in it, but it's mostly uh, beginner stuff. Uh, but I would read your po- I would find posts of yours on poker forums about like just the game design of yeah. DFS. And I'm like, that, I, that's what I'm looking for. And I mean, that's, that's the core of why last year I'm like, if no one's going to make the theory of DFS, I'm going to make the theory of DFS. Right. <laughs> I'm not a good writer. I'm going to, I'm just do it as an audio course and I'm going to change the title just slightly just so uh, David Clancy doesn't sue me. Uh, <laughs> right. I, right. <laughs> I, I had to think like a professional DFS player is not a professional DFS player teaches you how to think like one. So it can't be like completely, I'm not trying like I, you know that I am trying, but not like intentionally trying to say that I'm part of two yeah, plus two, but, exactly. but, but there, but say very similar to the logic of sports betting, kind of like, right. like, yeah, that's kind of like the theory of sports betting. Like that's, that's what that book is. But back in that time period that this, now we're talking about six years ago, uh, you wrote a lot of you, if, if you were back then you were probably considered the bear of the DFS like ecosystem, right? Like most of your work were like this, the, the game design is flawed. The, the, the ecosystem is unsustainable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some people were, were unhappy with me for sure. Right. But, but um, that's a very big talking TV. point. Like in a lot of, uh, uh, Sklansky and Malmuth articles and essays, like I, you go back to the poker essay stuff and this is like pre 2001, no limit. Hold him is dead. I remember that, that, uh, that essay from right. Mason Malmuth. It's yep. unsustainable because it, it cleans out the the bad players right. too quickly, right. and you couldn't you couldn't have imagined how popular the game would come, that there would always be an influx of money, that no matter right. how quick, and then we had the casino card rooms that would set the maxes, right? You could only buy in for the maximum of this, and that would kind of protect people. Uh, but in DFS, like I I view it I I mean I go back to those articles and I view it the same exact way as you do. I mean, right. I'm, I'm, I'm on the DK committee. And my number one thing is like, these payout curves are too steep. The, you know, the pricing is inefficient enough that like, like dude, right. Like, especially now, and we'll get into DFS now, but back in 2015, we didn't really have publicly available projection models. We didn't have a lot of the tools that we do have now. Right. But even back then you were like, the skill gap is too wide being that it's now 2021 and DFS tech, the, these companies are now even worth more. And I know a lot of sports betting comes into that, but the prize pools have not gone down. The participation has gone up. Uh, do you think that the main question is, do you think that your sky is falling ish type of, uh, type of concerns were either one wrong or still correct, but, DraftKings, FanDuel have been able to keep up with the user acquisition and influx of money into the ecosystem that it's that it that it's still growing because the 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 money's flowing in faster than it's going out. Sure, yeah. So I mean so my history with DFS was I actually was introduced, I want to say around 2010, with a site called Fantasy Sports Live which I think was like the original DFS site, maybe, you know, or it, it was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was proto DFS, you know, to call it that. And, but it was, it was salary cap DFS. It was, you know, basically the same game that, that we have today. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was fascinating. I was like, you know, this is like a new, you know, gambling game, <laughs> you know? And I was like, well, this is interesting. So I, uh, took a look at it and 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 first of all the, the salaries on that I mean if you want to talk about salaries I mean they were not great um you know that was the first problem with it but I was just like well this this game is broken and and you know and I was like this is a great idea this is cool I'm glad they did this but like this game is completely broken because the you know the like thing that casual people are, are gonna think is the goal of the game which is like you know put pick the players that are going to like score the most points on average is not the actual point of the game, right? The actual point of the game is to like score the most points most often with the most runouts of the, the slate. Right. So, and those are two extremely different concepts, which is the whole game theory 
idea, I guess. And, you know, and, and like, that was my observation immediately about this game was like, I was like, well, this game is going to suck because every casual player is going to try to play it one way. And then you just come in and sweep up all the casual money by, you know, with basically the game theory stuff. And so, you know, so I kind of dismissed it. I was like, it's a cool idea, but it's a completely broken game. And then, you know, half a billion dollars of investment capital later, <laughs> later right. you know, I, I too, I kind of woke back up to it in 2015. And I was like, I mean, I kept seeing, you know, I'm, I, again, I've been in, I've been in, um, you know, this, 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 you know, poker and, and gaming and stuff for, you know, 20 plus years now or 20 years now, um, you know, and I would follow the news and, you know, I started seeing, you know, so-and-so investing 10 million in DraftKings and so-and-so investing 30 million in FanDuel. I mean, I'm making up the numbers, but like I saw increasing like investment interest in the space. And I was like, I mean, I mean, if they're just going to make money rain on this, then it'll work. You know, that was kind of, so, so then finally I was like, I was like the final straw. I mean, they just, someone had just invested like 300 million. And I was like, fine, I just have to do this. Like it's like, it's too much money. Right. I just, you know, yeah, but you still thought the of, game was broken. Well, it, it is broken. <laughs> right. But that, but that it is broken. But what I'm saying is that but, if the, if the, the central thesis on why the game is broken is because the ecosystem dries up too quickly, the same right, way, but, the yeah, same way so that it would be in poker. If there's outside money, you know, being, being, yeah, but you're talking about being, investment money. I'm talking about like actual, so no, you're talking about the marketing the and just like people. No, it's all the same. It's the marketing, right? So what happens is, you know, so-and-so invests $300 million into DraftKings, right? And then DraftKings turns around and takes that money and basically fire hoses it, you know, into the, into the world as, as marketing dollars, you know, one way or the other TV ads, this ads, that, you know, and, 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 and that money converts at some X percentage to um, liquidity into the into the pool as they acquire customers, people deposit their money. You know, basically for every dollar of investment capital they get, they spend X percent of that dollar on marketing, and then Y percent of that X percent uh, gets deposited on the site, right? Because the marketing converts to new customers. So it's a direct. It's I mean sort of a direct proportion between the amount of investment money that's going to go into a business like that to the amount of money that's available to win as, as a player. Right. So, you know, and this is the way poker was too, for sure. I mean, during that period where they, the, the marketing was crazy. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was, it was crazy. Right. So, yeah. So I was like, well, if they're going to invest all this money, I mean, yeah, it's going to be good. You know, I, I mean, my reason for not getting involved was like, I thought it would just shrivel up. Like I was like, this is not going to get traction, but I mean, you can make it get traction by, pouring enough money into it so anyway so i got involved in in 2015 also actually um but but the the at the beginning of that baseball season i was like well this is just too much i just have to start doing this so yeah i basically i came up with my strategy very quickly like in a day and then i i wrote some code that just basically you know spit out lineups and then i had a like a little keyboard mat because you weren't you there was no like CSV or, you know, whatever, like you couldn't, there were no, no tools on the site to like get these lineups. In. So I basically had to hand type in all these lineups I generated, but I've had little keyboard macros that, you know, quick, but yeah, I sat there, I don't know. I sat there like three hours every day making lineups and then hand typing them into. <laughs> and, back, and back then there weren't any entry caps. Right. Yeah. So I would have, I mean, I remember some of these GPPs, I, I had over 500 entries, I think in some of them. And, uh, I mean, my little script would make as many as I wanted. You know, I don't think it's optimal to have that many. It's certainly, it's certainly not optimal to have that many in, in a lot of these, but at least with my strategy, maybe, maybe if my strategy were better. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I had, to, I basically had a little, I wrote a little thing that would, you know, generate strategy lineups for me and jam them in. And I mean, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, and then, and then I had a thing where, you know, they would, I don't know if they still do it, but you could download the, Contest results as a yeah, CSV. You, you 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 wouldn't believe that in 2021 FanDuel you still can't do that. Okay, you could do it on DraftKings though. Yeah, right, right. So you could do you could do this on DraftKings. So I would download the I would download all the contest results. I put them in a big database, and then I would run. You know, I would basically run new strategies through the, my database. I would say, okay, well, if I construct the lineup, 
you know, this way? Is there a positive correlation or negative correlation? You know, am I helping myself by stacking a the pitcher with the team or against the team? Or, you know, like I would, I would kind of come up with a thesis for what the optimal lineup construction looked like. And then I would kind of test it with these, you know, actual contest results. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I did that. I did that for one baseball season, basically um, went quite well. Uh, and then, um, and then Ethan Gate happened <laughs> and shortly which, which wasn't he, a thing, which really wasn't a, th- which is overblown. It didn't I mean thought anything. it was, I mean, I, I don't want to get into the politics of it. I, I thought it was, um, overblown yeah uh well the other thing was before that period right the, so you refer to that article i wrote the, the mckinsey right and the reason why i wrote that article was because i kept seeing like in the industry press you know there was all this investment and i kept seeing these graphs that were like daily fantasy adoption and it was just like to the moon <laughs> like projected you know it's like projected daily fantasy like like you know, handle in 2015 and 2016, twenty six by 2020, like the entire world's GDP was like <laughs> running through <laughs> on this graph. And I was like, this is crazy. I was like, this is, this is fundamentally still a broken game. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, you can, you can juice this, you know, this game as much as you want with investment capital. But at some point, if you're relying on the game to, and the other thing was it, it, it becomes, it becomes self-limiting because not only was there the problem of the game, like it, it, it itself was kind of broken, but but the, the the bigger it becomes, the bigger the ecosystem becomes, the more incentive you give people to like come in and just crush it. Like you, you basically incentivize people to put more and more, for lack of a better term, high tech effort into just taking all of the money possible out of the ecosystem. So when I came in in 2015, it was, you know, it was like, you know, Peter Jennings and, you know, I mean, it was kind of like, you know, the, the the smart poker type people who were more or less, you know, playing the games and, and, and winning. And, and, you know, my thesis was, well, I mean, if this is right, then by the time you get here, you're going to have sophisticated operators basically doing anything and everything to, you know, try to pull millions out of this ecosystem every year. So, but isn't you know, that, and, isn't and I, that, 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 the, the thesis that I make for today, right. In 2021, because I think that, that there, I think there were, that there are three eras of DFS currently. And I think there's a fourth era coming okay. up and we, we saw that in poker. So I'm, I'm relating it very much right. to the kind of the, the pre boom. So we're talking about like before 2001, poker right. then there's like boom 2001 to 2008 then right. there's the hud era right 2008 to 2015 and now right. we're in the solver era right. of poker like, like if you want to put it like that and i think in dfs right. 2010 to 2015 was like the the very much like the poker boom as right. long as as long as you knew something you probably mm-hmm. could beat the games Yep. Like like you could know sports and beat the games enough. Right. They were there were some sophisticated people, but you didn't need to know game theory. You didn't need to run, you know, any type of scripts or projections or nothing. Like if you just knew that oh, when this guy sits in a basketball game, this guy is going to shoot more. I, like I like think, that's and then we had the era right. like 2015 I, to 2020 is kind of the project like now projections are more of a thing they're more available to people right and then like the next era is like the 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 game theory simulation era that's coming up uh i believe my thesis is that people say that with the content and tools that are around the average player is better and i agree with that i think the average player now is much better than the average player in 2014 but i think the skill gap between the average player and the top players are getting wider and wider. So right. while, yeah, you 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 can know you 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 could get in you know in mind you could be in that minus ten percent ROI type of playing it for entertainment. You could maybe not beat the rake, but at least break even to the rake. I think there's right. a lot more of those possible players. There's still right. plenty of really horrible players, but the gap between that average player and like. We have a lot more average players that are losing smaller amounts of money 
But all of that smaller amounts of money is going to the top 1%. Right. They're just bleeding it away from the top 1%. But there's also more people in the top 1%. So when people are like, especially in the DFS bubble, it's like, oh, is the edge gone? It's like, no, it's just that instead of 20 people knowing it, 200 people know it or, right. you know, 2,000 people know it, but the ecosystem's much bigger and it's not coming out of the bottom 10 percentile. It's actually coming out of that, that, that average player five years ago would be losing 4% and right. now they're all losing 8%. And as time goes on five years from now, the sharper players will be even more better than the average player. Right. But the average player is not like it's the average player isn't going broke, broke. There's still enough luck in the game and enough contests to play that it's like someone's not depositing a hundred bucks and just losing it immediately. Right. So would would you agree with that? Am am I making faulty assumptions there? I haven't, I haven't really followed it. You know, I, I, I actually stopped playing, you know, basically, I I mean the DraftKings and, and FanDuel left Nevada in the wake of Ethan Gate. And I basically haven't played since then for various reasons. Um, but well, you, know, not, you can't you can't which, legally play. <laughs> not in Nevada, no. Right. And and I haven't made any accommodations to try to you know go drive to somewhere to play or whatever. You know, it, it just I'm I'm working on other sports stuff now. Um, that you know takes up all my time. It's so probably going to end why. up being more profitable. I I I mean I hope so. Right. Uh, but yeah, so it's um. But yeah, it's 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 uh, that sounds completely plausible to me. And and I would say like I would say we never really ended like like certainly the the this was not right, you know. So like my article was to my article was to call bullshit on this, right? That was my right, on the like, hockey stick. We go to that was my motivation. To, to everyone like, playing daily fantasy in the entire world. I was like that hockey stick's not a thing. <laughs> that is just not a thing that can't possibly be not with this game, right? That was the point of that article. Right. And, and, and so you asked me, like, do I think I was right or wrong? I mean, I think substantially I was right. Like I, it, the hockey stick was not a thing and was never going to be a thing. Um, now, the thing I will say is the marketing dollars, you know, for a while they kind of dried up. And now, I mean, I mean, ever since, you know, 2018 in the Supreme Court thing, I mean, DraftKings is now, you know, yet again, gotten a huge investment. They're now a public company worth, you know, 10 billion plus dollars. Right. And, and, you know, those marketing dollars aren't, aren't ending anytime soon. Now, obviously they're kind of focused more on their sports book today than they are on DFS, but you know, at the end of the day, it's branding. I mean, how many, how many Americans, what percentage of all Americans have heard of DraftKings now? I mean, it's gotta be. It's high. Okay. It's got to be quite and, high. And, right? and some of them have a negative sentiment because of that. Of course. Of course. But like, but like, it, it's, it's like a, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, I mean, it's a massive brand now. I mean, you can't not know what DraftKings is almost. And and yeah, I mean, I mean that that massive branding campaign that they've done, they've done an extremely good job of, you know, is going to get people into this ecosystem, you know, ongoing. You know, it's going to get new people interested. They're going to say, hey, you know, let's try this daily fantasy. So and they, and they don't realize know, that it's a broken game. To just to just to right. be clear about the, why the game is broken. And right. what would need to change in order to fix the game? We're 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 calling it broken, but it's not like the game is broken. Right. It's that the law the the ecosystem. Like the thing in poker is that, like from a sharp player's perspective, a lot of people don't understand why. Like I will suggest things that hurt me in short term, but help me in the long term. Right. Is because like if you're playing poker in in a limited Capacity. Let's say you, you, you only have, you're playing a private game and you have, you know, 20 people that are playing. It's like if the worst players go broke quickly. Right. Now you, you're eventually going to get to a point where you don't have no one to play poker with anymore. Like now, now you can't, you could can be the sharpest player, but you can't make any money because there's no one to play. Everyone's right. broke. Like, right? so right. you'd rather skin the cat slowly. Right. And, and, and to me, what makes it kind of broken, and this is true in lots of strategy games. Again, I, I call it broken, but I, I only call it broken. Like it's, it's a great, first of all, it's extremely fun. Like I like almost never had more fun than when I was that summer, I was playing daily fantasy every single day. Like that was, it's incredibly fun. So that it has going for it. B it's, it's when I say it's broken, I just mean like, like you said, like the ecosystem is hard to be self-sustaining for it. The, and, and, and what makes it that way 
and I mentioned this before, but just to be clear, is that is that what appears to be the object of the game when you casually approach the game is in fact not the object of the game, right? So like what appears to be the game, what, you know, I'm going to start up Daily Fantasy. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to pick the players that are going to score the most points, right? So I'm going to look through and, 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 and basically, so, you know, the super casual way is, well, I'm going to pick my favorite players, right? And then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to take this game a little more seriously. Like I had someone in high school reach out to me and he said, you know, I know more about baseball than anyone, but I, I, I just keep losing on this DraftKings and I don't know why. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I, I mean, I basically gently explained to him that the thing he was trying to maximize for, which was like chalk, basically, he was trying to find the chalkiest players. Right, that was his. Right, it, it's like, t- how I ex- but how, Ed, how I explain. Word, but like, right, how I explain it, Ed, is that uh, most average players, like for especially for GPPs, like we could right, distinguish fifty exactly. fifties and double. Ups. Yeah, this is all about GPPs. This is all about GPPs. Uh, yeah, is that uh, the average player is trying to score, is trying to maximize their chance of scoring the most points. Correct. Yet sharp players are trying to maximize their chance. Of getting the most equity in the in the prize pool. Exactly. Exactly. Right. right. And that and and that's that's exactly why I say it's broken. Because because there's never there's no fixing that. There's no way that my friend from high school is ever, ever going to approach this game with that mindset. Like he's just not. It's just not how well, he's not how Well that's how we make money. Well, exactly. Well, and, and in po and, and in poker, you I can still play against people at the casino card room here that have been right. playing for years. Right. That still believe in like lucky dealers and oh, yeah, and, sure. and flop lag and you know stuff like stuff that obviously right. like you know it's like oh well uh, uh, hearts hearts come out more than any other flush draw. I mean I've heard I've heard stuff oh, yeah. like oh, that, yeah. <laughs> and if that entertains them, that entertains them. But exactly. I mean, uh, I mean, there's no they could st- they there's enough luck in poker that even with those superstitions, right, you could win often enough, and in DFS. There's still there enough is, amount but, of luck but, for them but, to win. Also, my friend was utterly demoralized by the game. Like he had been playing for I don't know a couple months. He's like, I know so much about baseball, you know, and I, I don't doubt that. I think he probably knows a lot about baseball, right? Like he, you know, and you know, and he was just like, I cannot win at this thing. I don't understand. He's like, it almost feels like I'm being cheated, and 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 you know, he was just putting. He was building uncorrelated chalky lineups and putting them into gpps and i'm like that's your your idea of how to play this game is like completely yeah but how do you fix that you know ed ed how do you fix how do you make the game that's that's that you obviously can't make the game so that it's 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 one-to-one because no it becomes a lottery right and you don't want to right you you, right you i don't know i mean i i wish i had that i you know i feel bad I, i mean especially now you know six years later i mean my my sort of one of my tenets in life is like, if you can't, if, if you don't have a positive suggestion for how to help or fix something, you know, try not to criticize it because voting stuff is hard. So I, this is a no, this is, this is no shade toward DraftKings or FanDuel or, you know, at all. Like I think, you know, those companies have built, you know, the best game they can. They've obviously put a lot into it. Like I have nothing but respect for the work that those people have done and put into those games, you know? So I just want to make that clear. And, and yeah, I don't have the answer. Like, it's not obvious to me that some of the things they made, they did, I think were clear. Like, I remember this, that the next baseball season, they made it so you couldn't stack six players for the team. You could only stack like five. Right. But right. still, that it still means you stack five. though. Well, right. Right. But I mean, to me, that was, an, I mean, six was just so overpowered. Like, it was just like, you know, there was like, anyway, so like, so changing some of the rules like that, like putting more constraints on on some of the some of the most counterintuitive strategies, some of the strategies that are like casuals will never do this, and everyone who knows what they're doing will do it, right? You can kind of put some constraints on that. Do you want to eliminate it? No, but you know, you, uh, you can. So those are some of the things you could do. I mean, to me, the other big problem with it was always that. I mean. I could make my, let's say after they did the lineup limits, you know, I would have my little script come up with 150 lineups according to my strategy, you know, and, and hand put them into the thing. But once the lineups were in the system, I could enter them into literally every GPP on the site, which I did. 
You know, I would just go enter that, enter that, enter that, you know, just across the board. And so I could just, I could just basically in with, with five clicks, like flood the entire DFS economy with my 150, you know, sharper than your average bear lineups. And that's just, you know, there, there's no, it, it, there's no opportunity po- cost. Right. Exactly. And with poker, at least there's opportunity cost. Like if I want to play, if I want to play eight tables, I can't play eight tables, like, equally well as I can play four tables. Like my, my performance will degrade over the eight tables. And the more I try to like metastasize my like, you know, poker ability to like slurp cash out of the economy, like, like it degrades. And then there's some point where I just can't do it anymore. Right. And, and, you know, and, and then furthermore, you know, I have to make a choice. Do I want to play, you know, 2550 you know, with the big boys, or do I want to play twenty five cent, fifty cent, and take their money? Well, DFS, you can do both. You just say, I'll, I'll take. Well, I mean, they, they, they've they've been stu- they've been, so they have limits they now, did that. but but they to me, it's that. not it doesn't go far enough. Right, and they have to ba- You have to understand from their perspective, a lot a lot of the the things that to protect the ecosystem. It's it's what what's that quote? It's like you know that they're not going to know something that where their salary right. exists on them not right. knowing it, yeah. like. Yep. Like anything they could do to protect the ecosystem is going to lower the amount of mo- profit they make. Right. Right. It's like we have on FanDuel, for instance, yep. everyone complains on Fan, everyone, whatever, that play cash games. Like DraftKings, you could block people from head to heads and you could set a limit that no one could take more than one at a certain stakes level. So right. I could post on DraftKings and go, uh, I'm going to post five 215s, five 109s, five at every level. Limit right. one, which means Empire Maker can't come by and take all five of each. Right. He can take one of each, but not all right. five. FanDuel, they have no limiter, no nothing. So right. if someone wants to come by and take all of your games, they can. Right. Now, FanDuel does it. For, there's one only one reason to keep it that way. is because the more games that fill, the more money they make. So, like, right. why would they put anything to stop you from doing that? I, I believe they don't go far. I don't believe both sides don't go far enough, but right. that, that is one way to have tiers of the ecosystem. Yeah. Another way and is less talked about, or it's talked about in the wrong direction. A, a lot of average players think softer pricing helps them, which it right. doesn't sharper pricing. No, definitely. Yes. Right. Sharper pricing would help, but because, because what happens that, Ed, this is what happens to a casual player, because I've had these discussions before. A right. casual player will enter uh, an NFL slate, like especially week one, when they release the prices a month early and half the league is injured. So you right, have right, all right. the prices become right. so inefficient that right. they look and they go, oh, it's easy. I'm playing that $3,800 guy. I'm playing that. Yep. Like the casual person could right. see how off, like it's so inefficient that even the dumbest player like not right. all of the dumbest, like you still get people that don't recognize that, but right. enough of them so that they like building their lineups. Like FanDuel MLB tends to, and NFL t- typically have softer pricing, meaning right. that it feels like you're playing more good players into your lineups. Exactly. DraftKings tends to be tighter. So you go to build your lineup and it's like, wow, I really need to make concessions, right? If yeah, I really like, want to play. My lineup sucks. Right. <laughs> But yeah. to a casual person, they look at it and go, well, I right. like my lineup better on FanDuel. And I go, right. no, actually, you would be right. better off playing your lineups on DraftKings because in a perfect world, in a utopian, that the salaries were perfectly efficient, no player could have a skill advantage over you. As long as you spent your whole salary cap, all the lineups would ha- have the same... It, not considering right. correlation, not considering other right, right. things, but just from yeah, a projection yeah. standpoint, yep. like it would all be equal, which means well, it, you can't make a bad lineup. But it, ma- it made me laugh because there were these news, there were these sites that came out. I don't know if you remember this, but like I, I feel like it was 2016, and the, and and their whole idea was let's get rid of the salary cap so you could literally just pick any player to fill any slot. Like you could just pick, go down and pick the chalkiest players, like like with no constraint. Right. The, the, so, so the site's selling point was the the sharks are they, and they would like they would like cite my article, right? Like like not directly, but like they would like allude to it, right? It was by the way, it was absolutely blue. Like I had no when I wrote that article, like 
I thought it was going to be crickets. Like I was like, I thought I, literally, I, like, I used I used your article in, to promote my course. It, it was on it was on John Oliver. It was on, like like it was quoted like I mean it blew my mind what happened with that article, right? So I I two hundred percent did not see that coming, but um and but so that some of these like startup DFS sites like almost almost like it felt like based their marketing around that article and they were like they were like if you play on the other sites you know wink wink like the sharks will kill you well not on our site why because we don't have a salary cap so you can play any players you want without any constraints and i was like no no that makes it worse <laughs> that does not fix the problem <laughs> That does not fix your problem, like, at all. So I just thought that was so funny how that that was, like, where they went with that idea. It was, like, exactly the opposite. Or or Super Draft now, Ed, has the the multipliers. But essentially that makes it a salary cap. It's just, it's still, it's still, you know, oh, you could play all the best players, but you get 1x instead of playing the bad player that you get 3x their score. Oh, right, yeah. Like, it it ends up being the same thing, judging whether or not their multiplier is efficient. But the main thing is that, that it's, like, Anything that you could consider to fix what's broken right. to a casual player tends to be the opposite. It, it's right. it's it's one of those things where the the psychology overtakes the math. There's the same thing in poker, actually, with tournaments, poker tournaments. They they came out with this. The, I don't know if you remember. They came out with this monster stack World Series event, right? So the entire idea was basically like. You know, same, but you know, a thousand dollar buy-in, right? So it was it was appealed to like the the the, the most general World Series audience or fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, but but extremely deep stacked and slow. But structure. extremely deep stacked, and it's funny, the, the the people could not get enough of this event. They were like, "That's exactly what I want because I want to, you know, I don't know, I want all the play, right?" And it, and it's just you know, and and I get that. Why? Because it's an experience. They're going to Las Vegas. They want to, you know, they want to get their their time worth out of the tournament but of course it's like it makes it more skillful it makes it more skillful it, it, it means their like roi on their buy-in is like way worse like you know like they should want the the Do, but the Ed, here's, an here's an interesting question here's an interesting question because the reason for that is that in any game the more decisions that need to be made the right. more mistakes that a bad player can make and more for sure. good decisions a good player could make so yep. like like that's the reason. If it's small stacked, if it's like thousand dollar entry, blinds go up every ten minutes. Yep. It's like the skillful player. Like by in two hours, this is all going to be over. Everyone's right. going to be shoving with eight high. Like yep. like anyone could win this, but it's not. Exactly. It's not fun. Do you believe? It's not fun. Do yep. you? It's not fun. But also, do you believe that a lot of same this occurs in poker, but especially in DFS, is because they're catering so much towards the dude that knows sports in the similar way in poker of like most bad poker players don't realize they're bad players. They think Correct. they're good players. So when yep. you tell them, here's a tournament that allows you to benefit from your skill. Correct. Yeah. The skillful players know that, but the, they know the bad players don't realize that Yes, it compounds your bad skill now, right. but you think you're exactly. good. So, like right. in DFS, they look like someone would be like, "I want to, I want, I want to be able to, but not have to pick out like the the three thousand dollar wide receivers." It's like, oh, I don't want to do all this research. I know right. football, but I know that these nerds know which like third wide receiver and fifth tight end, and like I know the main teams. And I don't right. want to be screwed by these like computer people that could know right. like the differences of point one. It's like, no, I know that this is a bad defense and I'm going to play this guy and you know, that type right. of stuff. So I don't want to play the $3,800 players. I want to be able to, oh, I could play, I could play Patrick Mahomes and Tyree Kill and I could fill in this. And it's like, oh, I don't have to play any scrubs in my lineup, but they, but they don't. They don't realize right. they're they're actually playing the least skillful. They think they're playing skillfully. I know. I know. So they want, like, so they go to DraftKings and go, oh, I have to play a three K guy in order to fit in the guys that I like. Right. Uh, the, what's they'll go? What's the skill in that? Right. Right. When, when in fact that 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 is the that is the skill right. that yep. you think that you have when you don't have it. Yep. So like how getting back to the question of like it's 
the game is broken, as you said, because right. 95% of players are playing for one purpose when the sharpest 5% are playing a completely different game right. and beating those other 95% of people over the long run. Yep. How, how do we make the games closer together where, where the 95% of people, anything that we could do to, to make it closer actually makes them want to play less? Yeah, I mean it's it's tough. It's definitely tough. I you know I, I, again I don't I don't have the answer. I mean I I did like like I I definitely think the the right idea again this is for long term ecosystem support and it may not be the right idea for DraftKings the business to do to their game today. That may not be the right thing because they have you know it's a complicated business. They're focused on sports betting. They have you know, lots of verticals, you know, whatever. But, but it's, it's, it's interesting. It's the, there should be some way, somehow more restraints on sharp people from getting action. I mean, they, they, it just has to be that. These, or getting action these... from casual players. I think. Correct. Like yeah. you don't mind like, Oh, if you want to, if you want to play $5,000 heads up against the yeah, other yeah, sharpest yeah, players, go, I mean, go, go, go for yeah, exactly. it. That's a whole different universe. Go do play that all you want, right? Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm saying that the the unrestrained access that that the top players have to you know a three dollar GPP or to you know to the type of entry you know because again this doesn't happen in poker, right? Like the the, the you know Phil Ivy is not sitting in your one two game taking your money. He's just not. Like, and if he, he and might, if he could, he would be. Of course, if he could, if he could sit at seven hundred tables guy, at once, he is, would be. I mean, that guy will win all the money if you get if you let him. You know, for sure. You know, yeah, no. If he if there was some way that he could like clone himself and stick himself in every poker game in the country to you know slurp up all the, I mean, of course he would, right? So, so to me, I mean, I and I don't I don't know what the mechanism is. I I don't know what the mechanism is to how do you how do you restrict the you know I was thinking well maybe there's like some kind of like have total like entry caps on certain level of tournaments. Like, like you're only allowed to enter, you know, $10,000 a month worth into GPPs in this class. Right. Yeah. But once like, you, once you put caps like that, then DraftKings, the business goes, well, we want well, more money. Well, it may or may not. Right. Well, this is what I mean. Like, a, again, this is in conflict with what DraftKings goals as a business are today. Right. This is in conflict. There's no question. There's no question. It is. Right. And, and, and especially today when, when I, I mean, I don't want to speak for them, but I don't think, you know, the health of their DFS ecosystem is their top priority at the moment that, you know, they have other priorities, which are clearly higher as a business. And, and, you know, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the, I, I, but I mean, I, I think a lot of it, truthfully, I think a lot of it is education. I think a lot of right. it is removing the black box. Right. Like, the difference between like li even live, we saw this with poker live versus online. You know how many conversations I've had playing live poker in 2004? Oh, you play online, it's rigged. Right. Right. And then it, then it turns out sometimes it was. Uh, right. right <laughs> then, yeah. then it, then yeah, it actually turned out sometimes it was, but just the but mechanics think... of like, there's a very big difference between seeing 30 hands an hour at a live table and seeing 150 hands an hour playing Multi, well, the whole, know, right. I mean, main, my like, I mean, you're whole, just going to see, you're going to see where uh, things happen well, as often as they do. I, and I you're just going to see I, it more. I don't often. even think it's, it's necessarily even that, like my whole theory on the, why everyone, why the it's rigged thing comes up so much. Obviously it like can be cause it's online. Right. But like, it's because of the skill gap. It's cause these people get their face crushed in by, you know, by five multi tape. Every time they sit down to play one, two, it's them and five, Faceless, but well, also it's faceless. It's it's the same thing in DFS where that you'll you'll I'll see Reddit threads or Facebook groups where it's like oh the bots won, and it's like right. what are you talking about bot? Like no, they're putting bots in that win. It's like right. dude, they're a publicly trend. Like why they don't even need to do that? Of course not. No, right, these are actual people that are better than you. Right, these it's are actual it. people that and are better it's, than it's, you. It's it's that experience, and they don't understand that. They don't understand that those five people playing at that table with them are so much better than they are. Like they don't, they fundamentally don't understand it and they wouldn't believe it if you told them. And then, and then their experience is like, 
like it got to the point where like that was literally the only experience you could have. Like if you wanted to go sit and play fifty cent a dollar no limit or whatever on on Poker Stars, let's say, and I mean the only experience was you know there was one seat open and it was you and five multi tablers. Like that was that was the experience that was available. And 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 yeah, every one of those people, I mean, they would go play. They would single table, you know, that one game, or maybe they'd play two, and. I mean, they'd get crushed. They were much worse than every single other player at that table. And they would, the, the, you know, they would never get paid on winning hands. They would pay off all the, I mean, it would just, they would get, I mean, every bad thing that can happen to you at poker, it would feel like was happening to them. Why? Because they were worse and they were worse than everybody. And so, and, and that felt rigged. It felt like this, like crushing, like, I just can't win at this, you know, and it just, feels like, well, how could that be? It must be I'm getting cheated, right? Like, that's just how it feels, you know, when you don't fully understand the dynamics of it. It's a, that's my thesis about why everybody goes to, like, the it's rigged thing. You know, I, I even see this in chess now because, like, there's people that cheat at chess. On I've been getting into chess just, again, I played as a kid and been it's hot on the Internet and, you know, Beth Harmon and, you know, Queen's Gambit and all this stuff. So I, I've been watching streamers and, and you know, and, and, and the fact is, like, I mean, at, at the average levels, like, I mean, I don't think people are cheating that much. Like, most people are there just to play a game of chess, right? But there are cheaters that sit there and use the engines and play them into the chess. And, like, the, the, the proportion of, like, actual cheating instances versus, like, suspecting cheating instances. Like, if you just play a game and get your ass handed to you, like, they're like, I got cheated. <laughs> it's like, no, you're just worse at chess than this person. Like, you know, it, it, you know, and, and I think I think that in all these skill games, like, that experience, it can feel like you're being cheated when when you're just, you know, not as good. And even and even if you don't think you're being cheated, like, that, this is why I, 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 your article on massively multi-entry GPP myths that is on betting talk this this article i've i have sent to more people than any other article ever in dfs uh and this is in december 2015 the reason why it's it was so uh eye opening to me is like this was after ethan like what happened with ethan gate showed me i mean this is like i wasn't playing dfs but right. it showed me it's like okay there's this thing called ownership right there's this thing called like, oh, like this, it's not just a challenge. Oh, anyone can pick anyone. It's like, well, there's constraints, which means certain people pick different things. Right. And just like in poker, in the theory of poker, what's what the fundamental theorem of poker is essentially, if you make a decision as if you could see your opponent's hand face up and you make the profitable decision, that's how you profit. If you, right. deter, if you deviate from that, that's how you lose money. So, right. like, just the whole aspect of if I knew what everyone else in the field had, could I now manipulate the profit potential of my lineups? Exactly. Like, that's what game theory... And once I saw that, yep. I'm like, yep. oh, this is ju this is poker. Like, this right. is what made me jump. Now yep. I got to play different... Like, that. that's why Ethan Gate was a big thing because, like, that was the first time. I was like, no, this that's is not the game that I thought it was. That's interesting. That's interesting. Right? It's, it goes from that 95 know. to 5. I first thought it was a game of pick and play. You pick players and it's a lottery and right. there's a rake and who knows. It's a, whatever. Once right. I saw it, it's like, oh, now I know what this, this... This is more like a game of how do I maximize winning first place in a tournament? Not And I don't care about winning hands. Right. right, I don't care about what you know with the strength of my. It's just like what to maximize first place. There's a there's a bar game that I invented like right around the same time that I would I would love to play. I would love to just spend an hour and just you know sit at the bar and and just play this game. It's it's a poker game, and they show like four or five hold'em hands, and then you basically just bet on one, and everyone does it simultaneously. So there's, let's say there's like a thousand people playing right on bar terminals all over the place and you can pick any anyone you want no constraint right and if your hand wins you split the pot with everybody who picked your same hand <laughs> i know where right? this is going <laughs> right i mean it's so simple right and it's just like it's it's just like like that would be a fun game i would you know you could add twists to it like you could right because like, if you have a thousand people 999 would select pocket aces right and so i'd select aces any other pocket. hand because there's no way that you that you could be nine hundred and ninety to one. I mean, like, I just, it just, right. you just, it's a print fest at that point. Right. So yeah, I, but 
anyway, I, I would love to see that game. It's a simple game, and and I think it would be fun to just you know sit there and pick your hand. But that's a broken. You know, but that's but you have to admit that's a broken game. Well, it's sort of it's broken too. But I I don't it, it's 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 a live game, so it's 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 the, it would never be a big game. Like there's there's no hockey stick with that game. It's a casual <laughs> game that you know people will dig a few you know bucks into while they while they drink or something. So, uh, but but the the article that you wrote about massive multi entry GPPs gets to that I believe is the number one myth of DFS. And right. you, and you know how frustrating it is to it, to describe to explain it over and over and over and over. Yep. And it's also the sub myth. There's a sub myth even good players have that's within this. And uh <laughs> just for you to <clears throat> briefly go over. It's very uh, what I say I mean, I discussed this also, uh, that the EV, the expected value of a lineup, is independent of all other lineups. Right. Right. So no matter what username's attached to it, like if you if there's an X Games amount of slate, and let's say there's there's 50 million lineup possibilities that could be entered into the contest, and 50,000 lineups get entered because it's a 50,000 entry contest. It's a large right. GPP. Once you have all 50,000 put in there, like there's an, there's an expected value of every single lineup independent. There's nothing you could do to change that. Right. That if you were to have all 550,000 and you didn't enter anything and you're like, which one? Choose 10 of them. Like you could choose, choose the, obviously you'd want to choose the 10 that have the highest expected value if you could, right? Right. But which ones you choose, like the usernames don't matter, how many you have exactly. don't matter, that like the EV is set. So if I wanted to enter into a 150 max contest because this is where the sub myth happens a lot a lot of semi decent players right say if you can't uh, if you can't max out a contest don't play it right if you can't play if you, if you can't play 150 lineups you're at a disadvantage and i go no oh, why can't you thing? play one lineup that has the highest ev exactly just yeah. you, you from an roi perspective you're right. you're making more money i mean like there's so like that's why i don't play 150 i sometimes i play 70 right. sometimes i play 100 sometimes exactly. i play 50 yeah. Right. And just like as long as they're your goal in these contests, in these GPPs, is to have higher expected value lineups than your opponents. That's it. That end of the day, that's it. Right. So right. obviously at the lower stakes, less skilled players, the EV of the average EV of a lineup is lower. At the higher stakes with better players, tends to the EV of the lineups will be higher. But the right. number of lineups in and of themselves don't matter. The misperception that correlation causation problem is exactly. go well why are they entering 150 lineups if there's not an advantage to it it's like well because their best their worst lineup may be better than your best lineup so right. they have it so by they want to play as many of the of as long as right. it's higher than average they want to play as many as possible right. so it's the re the reason they're winning on average, over the long term, is not because they're entering 150 lineups. It's because they're entering 150 above average lineups. Correct. If you were to enter 150 lineups and they weren't above average, you just go broke quicker. So exactly. it's not it's not a matter of the 150. Just it's a self selection issue. 100. Of, of, right. You think you go? They're winning because of 150 entries. Like right. no, the no. <laughs> the types of people that enter 150. Entries are the ones that are skillful players. So exactly right. The, the ones that are bad yep. that enter 150 after about a month, you don't see them anymore because they lost all their money. I, I actually wrote that article um, again. That was in response to um, what I perceived to be like a narrative that was building in, in the in the but but in the kind of are, are, are you are you sad to see that six years later it still exists? Well, I I was I mean of course <laughs> I wish <laughs> I wish people would would. Would I don't know? Would would understand stuff? Yeah, but I mean, the article <laughs> I, I, is written beautiful. I mean, to me, it's like, like, how do you not read this and go, oh, that whole like, oh, they have a bigger bankroll, and that's the only reason why they win. Like that, that this, this is so right. logical and so well explained with no like fancy math formulas or anything that you'd be like, oh, and then kind of once you get the fact that they don't have an advantage by that you'd probably start to play DFS better because then you understand exactly, you understand right. more of what you're trying to do, not what you have been doing and thinking that's what the game is. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, it was it was is because they were starting to talk about regulation. You know, they were starting to talk at that time. It was like, you know, Massachusetts was starting to say, hey, we've got to put regulations on this you know, game. And, you know, we need to start mandating in law how this game can and can't work. And 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 some people were trying to say you can't, you know, multi entry should should be outlawed, period. Why? Because it's inherently unfair. Why? Because it's a game of whoever has the biggest bankroll wins, right? That was, and so that was what I, I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, if you're going to make regulations about this game, understand the game, you know, that you're trying to regulate. That was my, that was my like impetus for writing that. I was like trying to explain specifically, you know, if, if someone was going to put into law how daily fantasy was and wasn't allowed to work, I was like, at the very least, if you're going to do that, at least understand the game. You know, understand what you're trying to make the rules about and why. You right. Know, that was having that was more entries. Why I wrote. It would it and also it would be more of an advantage if the payout structure didn't involve splits. Right. Right. I mean, like you, you explained that in the article. As far as like you're also the more lineups that you put in, it actually lowers the expected value of your entire investment to begin with, because your lineups compete against right. one another. So if, like. Feel free if if you could put in 150 plus EV lineups that have little competition with your other lineups like that's the perfect that's like right. that's that's the perfect world but I mean typically you can't you can't even do that so what it's hard to do that right it's it's, 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 that, yeah. it's typically impossible to do that because right. by the time you get down to even like your 60th lineup it's like it's still going to be a two v two of a, unless you're willing to give up so much projection and some I mean then it's just a bad lineup at that point but right. uh, the point is is that with 150 lineups all being above average, you're going to have lower expected value, lower ROI, but more raw money. So right. that's the reason why exactly why why people do it. it's very 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 similar to to in poker of uh, like like I grew up I played a lot of limit poker so to use the you know the the one and a half big bets like okay I can right. play this 1530 game and beat it for one and a half big bets an hour. Really right. soft game, right? Forty five bucks an hour, yep. or I could go to eighty one sixty, and be good enough to win a half a big bet an hour. Right. It's like, it's not. I'm. Well, no, you could only play that because you have more money. It's like, well, it's more raw money. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually less. There's less of a skill gap there. Right. But I'm making more money. So. Right. The 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 mo massively multi entry type players that play 150 lineups, they know yep. that, not all that. That if they just played one, they'd play their best lineup and they'd be the most profitable. But also, of course. it would take them like seventy lifetimes in order to realize that. <laughs> right. So why it if you if if you have a positive count in blackjack, you know you'd want to play you know six hands at once if you can, right? I mean, like yeah, exactly. Right. And exactly. then when you don't have, yep. you'd like to just play one hand. Like it's right. It's the same exact type of mentality, and they're not winning, like just purely based on because a lot of people that. Like you said, that gap between that that five percent versus ninety five percent. I think the five percent casual sees it as they're able to. They this is we're getting back to the same thing of like you're explaining how to play how how a how a an, a bad player could play better, and they'll do the complete opposite of right. Here's what uh, I don't uh, I only play like someone will tell me I can't play like you because I only play three lineups. And I go, what What do you mean by that? It's like, well, I saw that you played this weird, you know, you stacked against the chalk pitcher, you know, like a contrarian lineup. Right. Uh, and, but you, since you're playing a hundred lineups, you could, you could, you could play a bunch right. of those types of lineups. I like, no, if I was playing three lineups, like one of them out of those three would be that right. contrarian lineup because exactly. my goal is to win first place. Yeah. You're thinking in terms of, I only have three lineups and I don't want to lose. So I can't play as risky because I only have three lineups. And it's like, exactly. you could explain that until you're blue in the face yep. and people are like, Oh, I want to, I, and cause Ed, I'll tell people in single entry contest, I play more contrarian and they, their heads blow up right. because the ownership, cause everyone tends to play too safe. So right. it's like, now I have so much more advantage. It's that, it's that poker example of that game where everyone's I'll take aces. And then it's like, okay, right. I'll take seven, two offsuit. Well, everyone splits when that wins. Like most of the time I'm going to win the whole yep. pot. The other time, exactly. but yep. they view it from a risk reward standpoint of like they from them psychologically, it's not fun 
to play one lineup that has a right, very they, low chance to win because you're going to lose like 99 times right. in a row. They want to they want to maximize the chance. They they want to maximize the chance they have a sweat, you know, like okay, they're in 800th place with the, you know, in the bottom of the seventh inning, right? You know, and, and they still have no chance to win, win first, but they feel like they can. They feel like it, right? They like they, they, they have fewer nights where like they're just completely dead after the second inning, right? You know, right. and so they feel like they're getting it's kind of like the poker. They, like, they feel like they're getting more play out of their out of their entry. Right. right. Yet you know? it would be like, more profitable for them to just go. I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to take I'm going to take this pitcher in that stack and three innings in like that pitcher gets blown up for eight runs. It's like, now you close your laptop and you wait for tomorrow. <laughs> right. right? Exactly. Like, that's it. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's just, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really an interesting game, you know, that it, that it works like that. Ed, do you think the transition to what you're doing now with, with obviously you're doing stuff, deck prism, you're doing like a lot of in-game trading and odds and obviously I would suggest anyone to read the logic of sports betting. I, to me, that should be like a staple. If you bet on sports in any regard, that you, if you read that once every six months, I can't see how you're not uh, at least a break even sports better, even as a recreational. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I to me that 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 is the theory of poker for for sports betting. Uh, getting using the same type of type of mentality from DFS to sports betting where the things that are the, the things that people think are the most beneficial end up right. hurting them the most. Like that, that whole mentality of like your book is not for people that casually that, that takes sports betting as entertainment. Correct. Right. It's, it's, it's not, it's a, it's a niche. It's an, it's, it's the same thing for this podcast. The same thing for my course. Like if, if you're playing, right. I, I say, if you're playing DFS as entertainment, don't listen to a word I say. Just plug right. in whoever you want to play. Or, I mean, just right. like don't. And if you're playing for beer, if you're playing for beer money, I play three. You know, you you have a nice job and you do this as a hobby and you're playing five dollars a day. Don't let who cares. Don't care about bankroll management. Who cares? Right. Right. You you don't need risk management strategies. You know, if you want to, you know, oh, you play four dollars and fifty fifties and a dollar. Like, don't worry. It's it's inconsequential. The amount of money exactly. you can make doing just like with small bankrolls. I have a five hundred dollar bankroll. How do I play seriously? It's like we'll get a part time job until you have a bigger bankroll right. where eking out three percent edges is worth enough raw money for your time, right? right. And I view sports <laughs> right. betting the same yeah. way. That yeah. would would you would you agree that ninety nine percent? I'm saying ninety nine because. Maybe I could go higher. Of sports betting content is, uh, from a being profitable perspective, worthless. And would you, would you agree that, I don't know the best way of putting this, that, uh, do you do you believe that that there are sports betting, especially now in the United States is do you believe that it's more of an aspirational activity or an entertainment activity when it comes when it comes to the content of it right i think so this is an interesting question um i mean the the first answer to the question is like 99% of the sports betting content will not help you make money betting sports period for sure i mean that's that's I not can easily say that. To me, I'm not saying I don't think that's controversial. I don't. It's yeah, it's not controversial. I mean, I, I think you have to. I mean, the, the thing is to once you understand, once you understand, like how it's possible to make money in sports betting, it 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 it's almost obvious, right? Once you once you look at the content and what they are talking about, and then you say, well, how do you actually make money doing this? Like it's they're they're not talking. You're playing. The same the, length, is is this right? like the example from earlier, like? That 99% of people are playing one game while the 1% right. that are making money exactly. in sports betting are playing it completely different. Correct, correct, correct. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, the, the, the other thing is, like, I think it's tricky, the aspirational thing, because because in sports betting, like, like I, I felt, you know, I made a career out of writing poker books, and I felt very comfortable saying, look, 
if you read this book a lot and you play poker and you apply yourself and you go play one, two or two, five at the card room, like you could probably learn how to win. Like, I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to suggest to people that if they, you know, if they apply themselves, you know, yeah, you're going to be working harder than the people you're playing poker with. I mean, you know, unless you're really not, you know, suited for poker, I don't see any reason to say you can't win. Sports betting is a completely different animal because you're betting against the house. And for the most part, the house does not want any winners. Right. So so even if you pull, even if you bet sports in a way that causes you to win, they have people at all of these companies that actively try to identify who is betting in ways that could cause them to win and stop you from doing that. Right. But that, so, that, that but that. Well, that goes into a second. I want to start from even before that. Okay. Of like, yep. like, like you said, in you uto- in a, in what it's pitched, what it should be. Let's get into right. the utopian. Okay. Is you're not betting against the house; you're betting against the market. Right. Like in a perfect world. Correct. Like Correct. The, the, always, the example that's given is that the the bookie, the sports book, whatever, wants to take equal action and then take their right. vig in the middle. But we both know that's not how that's not how sports Definitely betting works. Right, uh, right. If yes, if that could happen, all the sports book would ra- would rather that, but it's just untenable to even accomplish. There's it's just the, not a thing. It's just not how it works. Right. It's right. just not how it works. Right. right. Uh, that lines are shaped, and this you go through with this in the book. Lines are shaped typically through sharp action. That right. the book, like when people say Vegas knows. Or the books, like the books don't know shit. The books are probably the dumbest out of all, like, like, right. You would say like the books are actually the dumbest. They're, they're facilitating the marketplace and they're taking small bets from profiled bettors. Correct. And using that information to make, make the market, make the market more efficient. Correct. Right. And then the public, once the limits start going up, then the public can now, the, the public, Joe Q public. Yeah could bet on what essentially is an efficient line at the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, for, and, and like that. For, so, so to be Joe profitable. Perspective, it's, it's perfectly efficient from Joe Q. Public's perspective. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But the real, the real, like you tell people that, the, that it's, it's not comp, it's not hard. Ed, would you agree with this? Uh, it's not hard to find bad lines. It's true. At all. It, the, the hardest part is getting the money down. Yeah, it's trivial to find bad lines because th- that market, right? Because because the sports folks are not satisfied with that market price, right? Because they don't want to offer, you know, Broncos minus seven, right? Well, you could bet Broncos minus seven or Raiders plus seven. Well, guess what? That's an efficient price, and you ain't gonna win on either of those bets, like basically, right? I'm I'm oversimplifying, but but let's just for all practical pur- purposes, you ain't gonna win on either side of that, like ever, right? But the, the sports books then take that, but but that mar- that market price, the market forces we described, only shapes that one price, right? So then sports books say, well, I don't want to just offer that minus seven plus seven. I want to offer you know minus and plus four and a half, and I want to offer you know the other way four and a half, and I want to offer fourteen and a half, and I want to offer some parlay where you know the the Broncos win and you know these three wide receivers score a touchdown, and I want to offer you know, and so they start you know, in their head, they start coming up with all these, like, you know, huge menus of bets that they want to offer on Which is essentially a derivative of the major markets. There's no market forces that determine those prices. There's somebody at the sports book with a spreadsheet, or, I mean, I'm Oh, again, oversimplifying, but this is the idea. In a perfect world, it would be something like your company doing it. Right, and this is part of what our company does. This This is what our company does. But, but, yeah, so so basically the the all those derivative bets are not subject to these market forces. This is somebody at the sports book doing some math, right, to come up with the line. And yeah, that math sucks a lot of the time. I mean, it's 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 hard math. It's not easy math. It's not like it's not like they're screwing up, you know, you know, how many flops are in Hold'em or something. I mean, you know, the math is hard. It's, you know, wh- what should the second quarter price be if the Broncos are minus seven? And, you know, I mean, and the total is 54 and, you know, and, and you know, somebody so-and-so is an injury risk. And, you know, what, like, 
like it's, it's it's not a simple math equation and and every game is different and and there and sometimes there are subtle um effects in sports that don't apply to every game across the board you know like like generally these math equations are based on what a league average is right it's like what would the league average second quarter line be based on this game this market derived you know game spread in total and well maybe maybe this isn't a, a, a league average game maybe there's some special effect happening in this game maybe there's wind maybe there's you know you could think of a list of all the things that could be different about this game you know who's gonna what the rotations are gonna be in an nba game or whatever that that would change what that price should be in this game versus what it would be in the in the league average game well the books don't do any of that i mean they, they i mean they try I, i'm not trying to but like it's an impossible task to offer as many bets as they're trying to offer and do that math like nail the math on every it's just not possible and so what what actually happens is yeah these menus these huge menus are absolutely full of lines that are are beatable you know they, they yeah, and, but, the, but, the, but the problem comes in i think to get back to like how the con how how sports betting is perceived in content right. versus how it's actualized. Correct. I tell people uh, that, like, here's the here's the here's the two main things that I try to explain to people, and you you tell me if number one if I'm absolutely correct, or if there's a better way of explaining it. Right. Said number number one, uh, first thing is any derivative market uh, is beatable from beer money. Like as far as like if, if you're if you're a five dollar ten dollar better right. and you find a home run prop that's off if you want to do the the math if you have a you know if you're playing DFS and you have a projection system and you could say that twenty six percent of the time Pete Alonso hits a home run in this game and if you you get you get plus plus four fifty or something like go bet on it and if you want to bet right. ten bucks on that like you, you you'll get a return you'll I mean it it'll it'll be beer money. But like right. you're not going to be able to go and bet five thousand dollars on that. But you, you, you're just it's it. If you get it down once, you ain't getting it down twice. Like it, it, it ain't going to happen on those types of markets. And then number right. two, from a content perspective, like the the there's a paradox in sports betting picks related content. Right. That like this is the gap between like we say with the DFS, one percent is playing the game that. It is, and ninety nine percent of the game, playing the game that it isn't. That uh, it's all about price and number. So it's like it's not. It has nothing to do with like if I tell you right now, based on, and I'm a sharp player. Let's say I tell, I say to the world, I'm a, I'm the sharpest sports better in the world, uh, and I'm telling you that uh, that you should bet Broncos minus seven. That Broncos minus seven. That right. it's, it's a bad line, and go go bet it. Uh, well, number one, if I was a sharp player, I'd be betting it first off. And right. if if I were to be able to bet such a bad line, and if I thought it was such a bad line, it would move by the time that you by the time that you know about it. Right. It would have it would it would have now mo move to instead of minus seven, it would be minus seven and a half because right. the market would have adjusted that price. So by you betting on the Broncos at minus seven and a half, all the value is gone. So like my right. my pick doesn't matter. And then the Correct. paradox is, if I say I'm a sharp better, bet on Broncos minus seven, and then by the time my content comes out, which could would literally be an hour, literally be five right. minutes sometimes. I mean, like like literally five minutes late, like the line can move in a minute. Yep. So if my con if my pick comes out and says, you know, go bet the Broncos minus seven, and then you're then by the time you see it, it's still Broncos minus seven. You know what? I'm probably not a sharp better. Exactly right. right. Yeah, like that's the paradox. Right, a hundred percent is it's an information game, right? You know, and, and and the market aspect of it is is an information game. And, right, and but but do you agree you... with the the beginning part of like like that? Those major markets are one thing, but if I said there there's there's a strikeout prop that's off, there's a thing that's off, like like. You can't get enough money, even if I go bet it at fifty bucks. It's ain't gonna move. I mean, it's, it, it, I think it depends on how much you you. It, here's what I would say about that. I, I I would have agreed with that more before this explosion in sports betting than today. I I think there's gonna be a window of time where, man, you could probably make some money betting strikeout props. Like there's just so many sports books now, and there's so again, it's the marketing dollars, right? It's 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 the fact that 
you know, the, the big companies are now soliciting huge investments from capital markets. And that money is going straight into marketing. And, you know, and and they're all going to have product up. They're all going to have these strikeout props that you can bet. And, you know, some of them are going to be on, on your tail more than others if you if you try to go beat them. But I I bet you could make money betting strikeout. But this is a transient effect, right? I don't I don't think there's like long term money in being the best strikeout prop. But I don't even think there's the I don't even think there's enough raw money. I think there is. I, really? I bet I bet there is now. Yeah. I, I, know, I, I, it, I, I know. I know. I know. I, t- I talk to plenty of people that they get. You know, they beat some of these props for five hundred bucks, and now they're limited to twelve dollars. Yeah, for sure. For sure. This this will happen. I I I think if you're if you're clever about it, I think there's there's. I my my answer is they were probably not clever about it. They weren't thinking like. Yeah, but but I that's the, but this, that's the point that I'm making. Guy, this, that the that the average person. Doesn't realize oh, yeah, that that's average, more of the no, game no, 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 than the finding the lines. For sure, yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if if you were just like, if you just walked into this with no knowledge about sports betting, and you were just like, you know what, I can, I'm like the Swami on strikeout props for some reason. I have some angle. I can t- totally nail these things. And yeah, they're not. This is not the sharpest lines in the world, right? So, you know, and and your idea was, yeah, I'm just going to sign up at every sports book and jam in my strikeout props. Like you wouldn't last very long, for sure, a hundred percent. Right. Because they're they, because of what I was saying, they have they have people basically designed, you know, their job is to try to identify. They know their strikeout prop lines are not good. I mean, every one of these sports books, when they're offering you a strikeout prop, they know that those lines are not particularly good. It's like the salaries in DFS. Right. It's like there's somebody in, at, at, you know, at FanDuel making salaries every day. Well, I guarantee you that person is not like I would I would swear my life on that these salaries are like the best things ever made. That's not how it works, right? They, you do the best job you can and you move on to the next project, right? And that's how that's how these these lines more or less work. And and yeah, so it, it the company knows that you know some nerd can come along and just pick all the good ones off. So they're looking for the nerd. They have they have they have basically you, you know systems in place to try to identify people who are systematically taking advantage of, of the lines that they make that aren't good. And yeah, they try to limit those people. So, and, and they're fairly efficient at that. So, but, but I would say, I would say at the same time um, that I do think that there, I do think that there is money again on a transient basis, probably not, you know, I'm not talking about 10 years from now or five years from now, or you're going to go, you're 22 years old and you're going to do this until you're retired. Like, no, but in a transient basis right now is sports betting, uh, expands across the U.S. I bet there is there is there are people that are going to make real money beating this stuff by being smart about it. Is is for lack of a better term, like like understanding the systems that they use to kind of identify the the bad action and 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 you know not tripping those. Things. And it's it's not just strikeout props. There's you know in game you know this is hint hint. And there's 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 other things you can bet that are soft. But at the same time, are harder for the sports books to understand that that you're actually finding the soft lines, you know. And sometimes the sports books think their lines are better than they are, you know. That's another thing. Like they kind of know that, you know, if they do, you know, NASCAR props, like they 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 know the quality of work that they some sometimes like like think about think about all the all the gamblers you know that think they're like you just said they they've done some work and they think they're awesome and. They got, they got their roulette sports. system. They, they right, right? So, they got it. <laughs> so I'm telling you that that also happens on the operator side, where they come out with a product and they're like, "We put research and development into this product. This product is good. We're standing by this product. We believe in this product." And guess what? It's not quite as good as they thought it was, and it gets beaten. And there's a there's a there's a hubris from their end of, of letting people beat it longer than they should because they have more faith in, in the quality of their own work than, than maybe they should have. But that, that, I'll sort of leave it there. That, that's, that's, that's where you can find opportunities, I think, in the next couple of years with some of these sports books. But don't you think it's, it's – why can't they – I mean, I, is the, I, I think I know what the answer is. We have, we have we, we, books such as like Pinnacle, Chris right? – like they're right. known as like the originators, right? Okay. I mean, it's an age old thing. I mean, I knew I've known this for God knows how long that like right. the books will copy. I mean, like let right. let another book get the price discovery, and right. we'll just copy their line, 
right. after that happens. Why, like with these props, with 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 any derivative line, we're not even talking about major markets. We're talking about minor right. markets, niche niche uh, under uh, over unders on high school football, whatever the hell it is. Right. right. Uh, why can't they ascribe to? Like, and you'll, you'll see this on, obviously, on gambling Twitter, on, on sports betting Twitter. Right. With guys like Captain Jack and 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 uh, Spanky and all those types of guys. Right. Like, why can't they use, like, use the, like, the whole point is, if if you identify sharp bettors, you should be using, limit them to, to an extent in which they're still betting with you, and then right. use that information to shape your line so they're better is it just comes down to it's much easier. There's so much money in the non sharp in the hard. square action that, well, there is that, that will just identify them and ban them and just don't have to there worry. Is that, but it's a hard problem. It's not, it's not as simple as, as, as I think those guys on Twitter make it out to be. I mean, again, this is our, intent. so just, just for you, I, you know, whatever full disclosure. So I, I'm the CEO of a company called deck prism sports. Um, we are a, we are what we call a managed trading service, which basically means that we maintain line sets that we that, that a sports book can um, can can basically come to us and say, hey, you know, we think you are the best at maintaining NFL, college football, MLB line sets. Can can we buy your service and use your lines at all times? And 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 what that means is we say sure, and then we write software that basically takes our uh, lines, which are updated up to the second 24 seven and, and basically integrates it into their, into their, into their website. So, so we're basically offering to do that service as you just described and, it and that, and that, on someone's behalf. And just to be clear for people that may not be, or be into sports betting and don't understand it, there's a difference between that platform and the brand. So for instance, like, like can be like you're just like your type of what you do is more similar to like can be exactly it's correct and correct. the can be yeah, is, is the one that's offering the lines to that's why when you go to insert sports book here insert sports book name there insert sports book name there you're like oh it, the line is the same at all three sports right. yeah because they're all using can be because there's a is there's a provider right in, behind the scenes and right. there may be so, pro yes. different providers for different sports there may be different providers for different types of lines in correct. game versus so like DraftKings bought yep. SB Tech as part of that merger, and now yep. in certain states, SB Tech is the platform provider. Right. And DraftKings, for instance, just announced a deal with a company called Simple Bet, mm -hmm. and Simple Bet provides what they call micro betting, which is basically you can bet is you know is is Mike Trout what is Mike Trout going to do on this at bat? Is he going to walk? Is he going to get hit by a pitch? You can bet Mike Trout is going to get hit by a pitch at like 80 to one or whatever, you know? So, so that, and, and, and those prices come from a third party company that is, you know, somewhat similar to ours. We, we offer, we don't offer lines like that. We have a, a different product suite, but it's the same idea that, that we basically offer, you know, up to the second lines to sportsbook. So, so what you described about like, take the sharp action and move the line. Like, People say that glibly on Twitter. This is extremely difficult <laughs> to do correctly, especially because there. Are, first of all, there are. I mean, do not underestimate how many smart people there are out there trying to win all the free money. Like, like if you make a mistake, these people just they're no mercy. They just ram it down your throat. I can tell you that from experience. So you know, and the other thing is like, like it's okay. Someone bet. Someone bet Broncos minus seven. Okay, a sharp guy just bet Broncos minus seven. Now here's your job. You have to tell me what to do with Broncos minus seven. What? How far to move that line? Right. You have to tell me how far to move the Broncos money line. You have to tell me how how I need to move Broncos first half line. You have to tell me how I need to move the total. You have to tell me how I need to move the first half total, the first quarter total, the Broncos spread in the first quarter, the money line, the Broncos team total, the prop on the, how many all, all the alternative the spreads. Is gonna the prop on how many touchdowns the Broncos running back is gonna score, <laughs> right? I mean that one piece of information obviously informs every one of those lines to some extent or another, right? And you have to tell me, and then you have to say, well, what does that information even mean? Why is that sharp guy betting Broncos minus? He might be betting Broncos minus seven just because he knows I'm a dumbass. And I'm going to move this other line too far in response. And then he's going to, I mean, you know, you like, like it's hard. It's, it's, it's fundamentally like 
There's nothing easy about that problem, right? It's fundamentally a different problem. How do you integrate information that is not clean information in any way but, but, into but, but this, you would, this suite of lines? But Ed, but you would agree the easiest way to solve the problem is to just don't take sharp action. Right. Well, that's what they, right, exactly. But is it, it may not do. be the best way, but it is the easiest That's way. what they do. That's exactly what they do. They just say, okay, well, let's just forget about that. Let's just, uh, you know, forget about the hard problem that I just described. Let's not worry about that at all. Let's not worry about how much I need to move the, the Broncos running bat touchdown prop, you know, when, when, when the, the line moves by half a percent, you know, or, or by 2% or whatever, you know, let's not worry about that. Let's just leave it, and anyone who wants to try to take advantage of leaving it will try to identify them and get rid of them. That's that's the mindset. But it, it, so, is, the, is the reason they could get away with that mindset is because, like to use the term square, there's so much square action that there's no, yeah there it, it, it right. I I view it very differently to DFS. So like right. in DFS, the sharp players represent a lot more of the prize pool than you think it does. Like a lot of, right. like the DFS companies are cater, are catering to the, sh- to the casual players. Right. They want as many of those players as possible, but it's very hard to uh, offer million dollar first places when, you know, like it could be 30% of the entire prize pool right. are coming from like a, maybe 300 people. Like if they got rid of those 300 people, the ecosystem would be so much better, but then you wouldn't have million dollar first place prizes. And then the casual people are like, I don't want to play for 10,000. I only want to play for a hundred thousand and it gets lower and lower. So when people say that, oh, that uh, DraftKings is catering towards the, the the high volume plays, like, no, it's actually the complete opposite. Like right. they, they, they would rather not have them there and have them replaced by more casual players, but that isn't reality. So they right. they so, still right. need to cater. They're they're not going to limit their action. They're not going to. Well, what happens if we make it a fifty entry limit? It's like well, we're losing so much liquidity by doing that. In sports betting, you don't get that. Like right. you like if if there if there's so, tw- twenty people that beat beat your lines, there's twenty thousand people that aren't. So it's right. like it's such a small percentage of the handle that they'll just go get out of here. So me right. So to me, there's two problems with this line of thinking. Problem one is that is that what they do is they they introduce what I call friction, where they try to head some of this off. They know the lines are are is is beatable. this what the approval crap with like they're almost exactly. free roll they're free this rolling exactly, on you. This is exactly what the approval thing is. So so basically they have an entire process in place before they on the back end where they try to identify who's beating them. They have a they have basically friction that places. Y- uh, barriers between you clicking on the bet and you actually getting the bet. And and that, for various reasons, it's the approval and it's delays and blah, blah, blah. But what that results in is a rejection rate. What that means is that X percent of every bets requested get denied, right? Now, my thesis as a business is that's absolutely terrible customer experience for everybody, right? Like, bets getting denied is like the worst, like that to me is like the biggest sin you could possibly have as far as a customer experience, you know, in, in the betting industry. So my thesis is our thesis as a company is we are focused on getting that rejection rate down. I mean, aspirationally to zero in practice, hopefully below 1%. Right. But like we really want the, the, the customer experience to be you click the bet, you get the bet, you click the bet, you get the bet. Well, that's easy to say. <laughs> But there is absolutely an enormous amount of infrastructure that has to get built to enable that customer experience, right? So this is this is our thesis. Our thesis as a company is you build this, right? Then then you can actually unlock a lot more interest. That there are going to be more people interested in playing this game, you know, from your five dollar casual whatever to to the people who. So the second thesis we have is that there's actually a substantial population of people who do want to sit there and bet sports all day, but are too smart for the current product, right? So they're, they're, they're too smart. They, they know, I mean, they know that when that line, Broncos line moves from minus seven to minus 10, that you can bet over on the quarterback prop. They know that. They're not dumb. Like, they they get that, right? So, like, and, and, and but that's all they know. Like, they don't, they, they don't have, like, some modeling... Basement right, of it, nerds. It's, it's very like, similar. I think know. in the DFA space, a lot of people like I'm in discords and stuff. What ends right. up happening in an NBA, like what ends up happening? Uh, it's an NBA game and uh, Paul George gets ruled out. Right. And it's like, well, 
Well, the Clipper now go and go and bet the 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 right. uh, the opponent of the Clippers because the line probably should be moving about two points right. and it hasn't yet. But even the prop, you go to the props and you go. Well, now you're going to bet the Kawhi Leonard over. You're yep. going to bet the Terrence. Yep. Like, is there a Terrence Man twelve point? Like, like typically you can't get enough money down for that. Right. But it's but we're not talking about these aren't we're, these exactly. aren't sophisticated better. Exactly. So so my our thesis is. But these are engaged betters. These right, are exactly no, these, who you, these, these are, exactly are betters. Who you want. Right, these and these, these are betters before. that would actually lose money on the books long term sure. because they'll also be betting in game on whatever they'll be these betting. People, so, but every once in a while, they want to be able to jump on and think of themselves right. as smart. Exactly. So the, this is this is like to me the ideal better. Right. This is this is this is this is the a win win. All this person wants to do is sit and watch NBA games and jam in Kawhi Leonard props. Right. That's what they want to do. And I'm the sports book. I want to enable them to do that. And I can't because they're too smart for the current system that I have in place for making these lines. So I, instead of saying, yes, I can, I can absolutely service you ideal customer. You know, they have to say no, because you could figure out to bet Kawhi Leonard over when the news comes out. Like, like, and, and to me, that's how big is that? I don't know how big that market is, but I mean, I think it's pretty big. Like, I think there's a lot of smart, frankly, wealthy people who want to sit there and watch sports and, you know, bet on this stuff. And, and you know, and so, you know, again, our thesis as a company is, well, we're going to try to fix all that stuff. We're going to try to make it so that there aren't those holes in our product set. So that when that news comes out, all of our lines move roughly appropriately as far as we can figure out how to do it all at the same time. It all gets updated at once and then, you know, have at it, go bet whatever you want. And, and we could be wrong, you know, like we could be wrong. You know, we're going to say, okay, the Kawhi Leonard prop should move, you know, three points in response to this. Well, maybe that ain't right. Maybe five is the right answer or maybe one is the right answer. And you can bet on that. And you know what? You can beat us on that. That's okay. It's okay if you beat us on that. Right. And, and, but as long as we do the, the, 80% of the work to try to move things, as you say, directionally correctly, you know, we say this, this, we know this needs to move how much we're not sure we've got to take our best guess and put a line up and see who wants to bet it. Right. And so that's our philosophy as a company is, is, is we are trying to enable that experience where we're, we're not turning down anyone's bets where people who want to bet on sports can sit there, click in bets and get their ass. Right. Cause I mean, you know? to, to me, the most tilting thing would be is that someone goes to do that and go, oh, the, the news, whatever, I'm going to bet on. I'm, and and they go and they want to place a $25, $25 right. bet on yep. that Kawhi Leonard prop. And the, right. the screen comes up. Uh, you have two choices. You could either uh, uh, send the whole $25 for approval or accept $3.94 right. and then the rest for approval. It's like, dude, it's a $25 fucking bet. Exactly. Why, why, why is there friction here? Like it's exactly, not like a twenty five thousand right? dollar. It's a twenty five dollar exactly. bet. You're saying that put in three dollars. You know what? You know what that person's going to end up doing? I'm going to go open up a, one of the other twenty two sports books that I had, exactly. and whoever could give me the, the the. I mean, for for twenty, I can understand if there was a like, oh, anyone betting more than than a thousand dollars, right? At least do that. But I mean, we're at the we're at the point. Like, why can't they? Why even without your system? What? Why don't they mind? Like, dude. If someone beats you on a $25 bet, just let the fucking bet go through. Well, I, I, it's easy to say that, but these lines are really bad. <laughs> I sort of see it from their perspective. There's a lot of people out there who can bet $25, and these lines are really bad. And, like, I don't know how much it would cost them, but, like, I bet those bets would add up. Yeah, but it I'm would saying. get people I, to stay. Like, well, what I agree. Obviously, I agree. Yeah, I, but I, I, th I, think, I think what, I what, think what we both stick. agree on are not that. We agree on the fact that the type of person that is making those bets, ninety, I would say ninety-five percent of the people that are making those bets are not sophisticated, sharp betters. Correct. Exactly. The rest of the action you get exactly. from them is going to be money that you're going to be making. You may not be making exactly. a ton of. Yeah, they may not be from barstool. You may not be yep. making a ton of money from them. But if you allow them to like beat you on a line for twenty-five dollars on a prop, it'll mean that. While they're watching the games, it'll be your app that's open. 100%. And they'll be and, betting and on lines that aren't bad. 100%. So, yeah, again, our philosophy is let them put out the menu you can put out that's as, as kind of 
ironclad and come and get it, you know, come take your best shot at us as you can. And yeah, some of it's going to get beaten. And that's okay because the customer experience is so much better. Because exactly what you're saying, you're going to go, where are you going to take your sports book? You're going to take it to the, to the sports book that takes that $25 bet without a second thought every single time. It just goes click, bet, done, you know, and, and that's the customer experience you're going to, to me, that's such a winner. Like that's, they talk about differentiation, right? And, 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 and the way the industry often thinks about differentiation is, well, what, weird new screwy bet can we come right. up with where you know and it's like okay i mean whatever but like the core is how slick is that customer experience i see the bet i click the bet i get the bet boom 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 every single time to me that's the that's the like killer killer app for lack of a better term uh to differentiate a sports book and, and we don't have that today we i don't think there's any sports book really that, that that's live you know in the u.s today that that fully lives up to that. They all have this friction. They all have in various circumstances, you know, in game, you know, they're worried about people trying to front run the in game where, you know, somebody wants to, I mean, I, I'll tell you, you know, people want to sit there and try to bet that home run the moment it happens. <laughs> I'll tell you that, you know, on the in game. I mean, that's a, that's a fact, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you, you, the, the, the goal, the answer from my perspective is, you know, I mean, Fix it on the back end. Make it so that they can't get the, you know, find out about the home run faster. Get it into the line faster. Get it, you know, fix it, you know, fix it so that these holes aren't there in the first place rather than, you know, say, oh, who's finding the holes and let's get rid of them, right? It's just, it's just such a, it, it's harder. It's way harder, but it, it's, it's worth it, I think. So th at least that's our, that's our thesis. So we'll but see. I, we'll but see. I think the sports books thesis, I think, from the thing that annoys me about sports betting yep. content, it's the it's the one main reason why I don't do. Like I know I do shows on Roto Grinders, I know they have a sports betting vertical. It's yep. like I refuse to do sports betting content based on the paradox of one. I'm not even a sports better, right? Like right. I'm 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 not betting on these things. I don't even right. le live in a legalized state, and also the lines are better offshore than they are onshore. So I'd be. And how do you do content right. like that for a site? You know, it's it's one of those late, like a lot of the the U.S. sites now for content don't want to promote offshore because they they want to get the affiliate money from the right. from the on. So like yep. for me, what what's the point of me going on a, on a show going? Uh, you should bet on this line. And it's only available on Bet Online. It's already bet bet three sixty five right. right. for like I can't like yeah. I'm gonna say the FanDuel lines are are, are awful. Like go line shop and go line shop on an offshore site. I can't right. do that. But that, right. from an educational perspective, it would be stupid. Right. Like, what my integrity is gone for me to say you should bet on U.S. sportsbook sites if you yeah, get exactly. off. Yeah, exactly. And and right. And uh, you know, I mean, the the the, the actual holes in these again, a, a lot of these line holes are are you know these are systematic, right? This is these are systematic flaws with the way these lines get made, and so they'll recur again and again. Every time this situation comes up, you can bet it. Well, you know. As soon as you as soon as you mention it, then it's it's, then it's gone, gone, right? Right. But you even know, but even long. the information, like like I, I tweeted the other day about because I just got sick of seeing it in my feed. The the fucking money splits. Oh yeah. Like 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 uh, what what is your like to me? I think there's a fundamental problem that didn't exist in D, like to compare it to DFS to compare it to poker is different. So like if in poker. Poker stars had training material. Poker stars right. could have uh, articles, right? You had right. Card Player Magazine. You have our, you had, they had the poker pros. Like that wasn't in that. It could be it could be ethically done, but like no, this is how you play. Like the platform itself does not care. It's taking right. its rake, and if it it's gonna make players better, make players better. It doesn't matter to them. Right. In DFS, right. we had like a DK playbook. FanDuel had that uh, uh, number fire. They bought them. Like, they did content. So, like, you could go and re Adam Levitan did a podcast. I mean, like, these are our picks for DFS today, right. and here's a show and whatever. But they're just getting a rake from the pool. They're just getting a part of the handle. Right. Who wins doesn't matter to them. So, to me, there's, to me, I think it's a bad look when a DFS site also does DFS content because there is... It could look like a conflict of interest 
Oh, right. your a- analyst said to play this guy, and he did bad. Like, and you right. knew that it's one of those, you know, the game is rigged against me type of perceptions, right. at least. But right. from a from an reality, there's no to me, there's no problem with that. In the sports betting market, I think it's like the complete opposite of that. Right. Where we have, you know, like I mentioned Barstool before. It's like, like, how do you, how do you own the, how do you make money off the platform also giving advice on how to right. beat the, I, and like how. I think, yeah, I, I think that, I mean, I think the content is like, first of all, obviously I understand why they do the content. People are interested in it. They want to, it's entertainment, but I, I do think it should be made more clear. Look, you're not actually going to win our money with any of this. Yeah, but if then it would defeat the purpose so to, of it. If you want to have a well, it's, just, it's so you can watch. You know, it, I mean, it's the same as sports talk radio, right? It's, I don't know. You want to hear people talk about sports? You want to hear people talk? About, I mean, it's but it's not presented. But but Ed, it's rarely presented that way. Well, that's my point. Is I think it should be presented more that way. I think it should be presented more like. Hey, look, you're you're not actually going to win our money if you bet on the things we tell you to do. No, but it seems you know. like they obfuscate things. Like, like yeah, for, I, for instance, picture in DFS. Here's here's right. one of the the things that 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 you'll hear you'll see on Reddit threads or Facebook groups, right. uh, Roto Grinders or Awesomeo or whatever. Insert content site. Uh, right. Uh, all their analysts are are said they like this guy, that guy, and this guy. And in their lineups, they played the other guy, the other guy, and the other guy. Because obviously, right. like, we're playing tournaments, and you, you don't, if, here right. are the best median projected players. You're probably not playing all of them in your lineup because that's not how you win a GPP. Exactly. Like right. we said before, the 5% yep. that know how to play versus what the game everyone else is playing. Right. In sports betting, isn't it the same? They're presenting content yeah. as if... I, 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 I mean, I agree with your core point here. I... I I see the need for the content. I mean, there, there's a vacuum to fill with the content. And frankly, if they didn't produce content, I mean, the content would get scammier and like the the content that would fill the vacuum. Would no, be but worse, what, what I'm sa- what I'm saying, Ed, is like for instance, I could perfectly understand like v- VSIN, VSIN, or that type right. of stuff where it's handicap. Like I can understand handicapping content where you're right. not t- necessarily talking about lines and prices right you're just going the no, packers I, are playing the dolphins and let's break down this game right. and uh i think i i think they're gonna win by eight the line's currently at mine at seven and a half i think there's value there but but it, it's an hour-long show that's essentially you're watching espn show that happens exactly. to have betting exactly. content integrated into it but right. when people when people when people when sports betting analysts when they're called right. a sports betting analyst right. and they're qu- quoting uh, 80% of the money is on this side but 20% of the bets are on that side and that's why you should play this like right. dude i mean it, the that's... fact that you just said that means that you should take sports betting analyst out of your tight like you right. you you have lost all credibility i, I mean I, obviously that Obviously, I have to agree with that. <laughs> I mean, right, but yeah, but that's I, the point. You if you know, want to if you want to handicap the yeah. actual games, I think right. they're going to play a four three, and they're going to do like yeah, exactly. I have no like, problem with, with that. That's it's just that that's what, that's what I, I that's the kind of content I was having in mind, and I don't have a problem with that kind of content. I agree with you. I, I think some of this content is definitely definitely walking uh, some ethical lines sometimes. Where DK Sportsbook where they're, they're, is going to give you the money splits, right? It's like I, I equate it to the casino giving you the roulette spins that pass. Right. It's exactly what it is. That's like it's like it doesn't it mean is. anything. It means zero, right? right. Especially because they, especially because 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 the, the 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 sports books are not actually market making on, on these markets in general. Like often they're they're you know they're saying well you know they're they're there's a market elsewhere. They're kind of mirroring the market, you know, and and they're. Customer, it, it, everything you said is correct. So it, it's 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 not really helpful to know those money splits, and they they sort of imply that it is. And, and right, well, that's the point. They imply it. W- they right. wouldn't provide it unless they wanted to imply right. that there was a purpose in looking at it. Now, they right. if they wanted to give a complete, uh, you know, they wanted to send me an XML of every person that ever bet, like what lines were all the money at, and everything. Maybe that could right. be useful. But even oh, then, you, you, I bet you could find stuff. In there. Right, but it's the same. It's the same type of thing. Like I, to me, that's more hurtful. That type of thing is more I, more I deceptive than Correct. we have. We I have think... the, the the common, you know, the Rovell type tweets. 
Right. Uh, I think uh, it misrepresents how to how to approach the whole the whole thing. You know, it, it, especially because you know the the thing is, you know, when 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 operators when you know when some of this stuff gets brought up on Twitter and you know, hey, you're you're analyzing people, you're kicking people out, you're limiting people, you're you know whatever, and 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 they always come back. They say, what's well, it's an entertainment product. It's not it's not designed to be treated the way you're treating it, right? Yeah, but you're not. But that's, they're not marketing it as an entertainment. But product. that's right, and exactly. So that's that's where that was the point I was about to make, which is which is which is okay. I I agree with that. I mean, I think it is an entertainment product. I I I think that's fair. But then, yeah, I agree with you. But then, what is this eighty percent of the money thing? Like, that's not a, that's 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 not what you just said. Then you know that's something else, right? So no, I agree with that. I I think I think it's it's kind of it's kind of pitched you know aspirationally as like a a, a market. It's it's basically framed as a market when it's convenient to frame it as a market, and it's framed as an entertainment product when it's convenient to frame it as an entertainment right, product. Right. And and they kind of want it both ways. Right. And I agree with this. I agree. I agree with this. I mean, this is this is definitely I mean, this is this is our our business is I mean, you know, we're a few years probably down the road from from having a, a large scale effect. But like like this is exactly the part of the problem I want to fix. Like I want there to be I want the it's a market thing to be more real. You know, it's like it's I, like the stock. Uh, Ed, it's like the stock. No, it's like the stock market. Right. Like on the stock market. People, they're a stock picker analysis people. I think this and I think that. But at the end of the day, it's a, like no one could stop you from buying Apple. Like no one could like if, if right. you want if you want to buy it, if you want to buy DraftKings at fifty six dollars and seventy one cents, as long as there's a seller at that price to buy, sell, right. to buy the bid ask. And you're you're like it's right. it's. So if you if you want to get on if you want to be the best you know you want to be a stock analysis and say I think DraftKings is overpriced that it, it should be their fair market value is fifty two dollars like like that could only be someone's opinion but there's no one in charge of the market right. as long as there's a buyer and seller but when you're in charge of the market right. like. You shouldn't be out there. Like, imagine you were in charge of. You say, I think, I think, uh, I'm going to say that uh, I think DraftKings is uh, undervalued at fifty six dollars. I put the target price at sixty five dollars, and you're DraftKings. Right. Like, and like, like how, right. how, how, could, how, could, I mean, how I, could that be? Nothing, like, nothing like what, what are you that. doing? <laughs> Obviously, right. Yeah, there's nothing to say to that. And if yeah. anyone wants to buy it at a lower price, you could stop them from buying it. Right. And you can only oh, anyone that wants to buy it at sixty seven dollars. When we have the fair market value right. of sixty five, we're going to allow that. Yeah, and I, I, I right. And this, and this is a very fair discussion. I mean, I, I, I think first and foremost, it is an entertainment product. I here's how I view sports betting. I view it as an entertainment product. It's a game. I think it's a game, and the game is a toy market. That's that's how I view it, right? So it is a game. I played this game when I was a little kid in the in the eighties called like Market Crash. And you could, it was a game on my, you know, Commodore 64 and like you could buy and sell stocks and the game was like, you were going to try to build your bankroll up. But the like, the like, the, the irony of the game is that it always ended with all the stocks crashing to zero and you always lost <laughs> Well, it was called money. Market Crash. <laughs> it was called, it was, it was a very honest, very honest game. And, but, but it was, so it was, but it was a market simulator. It was a toy market that was a game. You know, that's roughly how I see sports betting. It's a game. It's for entertainment, period. You know, but the the mechanism of the game is a market. It's a it's a it's what's fun about the game, at least to someone like me, is like I can buy and sell. I can decide. Do I think this is overpriced? Do I think this is underpriced? What do you think? You think something different. You're gonna buy at this price, I'm gonna sell at this price. Like to me, that's what makes the game fun, right? So the more that the game can actually fulfill that kind of promise of being a toy market and actually behave that way and tolerate people who take it seriously, who take playing the game seriously, the better, the better the product's going to be. Right. That, that's, that's are, 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 like, what you're like, describing. I mean, you're essentially describing what DFS is. Yeah, more or less. I mean, it, right. It, 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 it's, it's, it's DFS except it's safer for the casual because, because it, it's, it's right. Is that right? Is that right? Because they're getting more efficient lines. They can. But put, I'm just saying, in general, of all they want, right? someone you know. can take five dollars on DFS and play for entertainment purposes. Build yep. a not DraftKings ain't going to tell you that. Oh, you can't submit that lineup because that lineup's right. too good, right? Right. And it's like you go, and most likely it's entertainment. You're most likely going to lose to sharper yep. players, but you're not losing necessarily to the house. 
So you have no negative necessarily connotation towards, you know, the, 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 the sports, like to the platform itself. But in sports betting, you want the same thing of, uh, I'm a casual player could just bet, could bet $5. But if you're, if you're a serious player and you're, they're, they're going to be people just like in DFS, there's probably several hundred people that can make, you know, a full time living to some extent, right? Is there going to be that the sports books, I can understand not wanting like the huge, the huge syndicates. They don't right. want to get beaten for millions upon millions and billions right. of dollars, for sure. but, but it's not, it's not to me. It's you, we want to have just like DraftKings would say, we like the fact that someone like me or someone like awesome and Uta cow and all these sharp players, like this is kind of how they make a living and right. they get to eat off of our ecosystem. We eat off the ecosystem Right. And everyone's yeah. everyone everyone works out. It seems like in the sports betting environment, I they think they want to they want to make a product that doesn't even have people that could make a hundred thousand dollars beating lines here or there. They just well, like right. why not make that because, product again? It's because it was hard. That's the answer to why not. It's 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 genuinely is it, is it hard problem. because if you make the product that could be beaten for a hundred thousand, you're basically making a product that could be beaten for a hundred million dollars. That's correct. Okay. That's why it's hard. That's right? why it's hard. So it's so 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 the reason why it's hard is you have to, uh, yeah, you you have to do your best to make an unbeatable product, and then of course some people are going to figure out how to beat it, right? But you have to really work hard to try to make an. I mean, this is this is what we do. We try to make an unbeatable product. This is what we're trying to do every day. We go. We got people trading trading right now and. Their goal is nobody can beat this, right? Is that the reality? Of course not. Of course, we make mistakes. Of course, we've made a modeling error. Of course, we introduce a new type of bet and, well, we didn't think of something or whatever, right? You could be, but, but that is our goal is you cannot beat us, right? And, and if, if you are committed to that, I think that's how you get the closest to what we're talking about, where you have a product that, that is not beatable for $100 million, it's beatable around the edges. It's beatable. You know, you, 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 you deal dynamic limits, you know, you know, you, you look at the betting action where are we, where are people starting to beat us? Well, you lower the limits on those markets. You say, maybe we shouldn't take $10,000 on individual inning markets or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, you're like, well, that was dumb. Some guys beating us on fourth innings and like, let's not let them bet so much on the fourth innings. N not let's not let this person ever bet again. It's, Hey, let's let's build an entire product that is is relatively robust to all these you know kind of kind of uh, easy attempts to beat it and 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 so yeah that's it that that's our goal and and I I think that's going to be a better better sports betting product I think it's a better way to look at the whole product and and, and game and 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 I I think it's going to win out I mean I I'm really bullish on on us as a company and I think you know uh, we've had a, a lot of success in the in the you know, we, we launched about a year ago with our first live uh, operators. And now we've got, I think, four live and, and, and another one coming on um, this month. And, and, you know, we're dealing to real smart, sharp people who are trying to beat us every which way, I promise you. And, you know, and we're doing the best we can to, to fulfill our product promise of having an unbeatable product while, you know, expanding it and making more and more options available. And, you know, I, I think we're doing a good job and I think it's going to be available, you know, in that paradigm, you know, in the U S more broadly, you know, in the coming years. So, you know, I, that, what, this what, is what my I, vision. I, I, I'm rooting for you, but I'm cynical. Well, thank you. I'm yeah. cynical though. You're cynical. I'm cynical that it's just like, there's, there's too much dumb money that they're not going to, that these yeah, platforms are not going to make the effort. Well, well the, here's the thing, right. Is, is, is the, the, there is, it, there is, there is, dude, it, Ed, it Ed, there, people are making same game parlays without realizing the correlation oh. isn't built in, is already built into the odds that, or, that, that right. had a, like, th this is how dumb the money is. They're making oh, correlated parlays thinking so, they have an edge and they're actually so getting worse the, odds. So this is the argument everybody, this is the argument everybody told me three years ago about why our business was a terrible idea. Well, I'm they not saying it's a terrible idea. I'm just no, saying I'm, I'm cynical, I know, I'm I cynical with all the other people. No, I understand. But here's the thing. Here, let, let me explain why I'm not cynical. So, so this was this is literally what everybody told us. They were like, they were like, why are you building that? No one needs that. There's so much 
dumb money. I mean, this is they didn't right. quite use that word. But this is was the argument. They were like, the industry is just fine. They just kick out anyone who wins, and there's enough, you know, other people to to have plenty plenty of money for the industry, right? And you know, and and you know, they were like, who would buy your product? But the, here's the thing: is what they don't take into account is 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 what I said about the customer experience, right? It's not just kicking people out, right? It's also the rejection rates. It's also everything else that they put in to try to defend their product, and this creates a worse product. And the and 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 these companies, yes, there's a lot of you know dumb money or, that they can profit off of. But if if one of the large companies adopts this more customer friendly service, right? Think about if you're betting in game. Think about if you're betting in game NBA right now. Betting in game NBA is a bit of a nightmare because you click your bet in, right? You're constantly being locked out. You're constantly being locked out, right? And and. I picked the NBA is a particularly hard problem, and I, I I ain't saying I have the solution tomorrow to in game NBA because it's it's just it's an extremely fast game, right? Right. Average MMA. No, Ed, 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 I I I play MMA DFS now. Yep. The uh, uh, er, all the people that I know, the in game MMA, basically Obviously. they say don't even don't even bother thinking about getting a bet accepted until in between rounds. Right. Well, I I would imagine. I mean, I I mean, I, I couldn't even imagine. You know, we offer these products, right? I, I mean, and then you told me, hey, Ed, you have to put up an MMA in-game betting system that anyone can bet during the round. And like, I right, because like, one punch, <laughs> right, one punch and one slip could mean, I mean the every, difference of minus know, 200 and plus I mean, 800 they, in a second. And, they, and, and you have to understand, like, you, you only really get the action when you've screwed up. Like, they, I mean, yeah, there's trickle, you know, there's square money all throughout. But then when you make a mistake, like, <laughs> <laughs> everybody's on top of it it's not like like this stuff is not yeah, but what, you what, what you're talking about is that a lot of a lot of people i know don't bet in-game mma is right but only because but, they've been locked out so stuff. often that they don't even the bother cu- trying ex- exactly the customer experience stuff. so this is my point my point is my point is let's say you're one of the big four or five sports books right especially if let's say you're number four right in market share right and you're like how the heck are we going to get from number four to number three or number two, right? We can't outmarket them. I mean, they're blowing who knows how many zillions of dollars off. There's a billboard on every corner for for the number one, the number two, and the number three. I'm not going to outmarket them. What I'm going to do? I have to outproduct them. I have to have a better product. I have to have fundamentally a something that's more fun to bet on than the other guys do. To, and and. To me, the very first, the most basic step, but also goes a long way, is you don't lock people out, right? You you have a clear, you know, if, if you can't offer the product that, that doesn't frustrate people, don't offer it, right? Only offer frustration-free, rejection-free products, but make them frustration and rejection-free. Make the, make, the, make the promise clear. If you see the bet and you can fat finger it fast enough, you know, before, before, you know, whatever happens and the thing goes off the board, you get the bet. There's no, okay, you're going to put the bet in and then the little dial is going to tick for six seconds while we think about whether we want your bet or not. Right. That's not a thing. It's not a thing. Right. You either get it or you don't get it. And, and 99%, the only time you wouldn't get it is if you happen to click the bet in the like same 30 milliseconds that the, the server pulled the, the line, right? Like, there's no six seconds. It's like, you know, as fast as computers work. You hit go. We have a signal that says no. And which one gets into the system first? Okay, fine. You know, but like 99% of the time, that's not how it works. You're not going to click at the exact moment that the line goes down. And otherwise, you get the bet. And, and you know, to me, that's how the entire th- – and, and, and if you offer that, I think people will choose it. I think people who actually try the product will get sticky with that. They'll say, you know what? I'm betting MMA, and no, I can't necessarily bet it all the times during the round, but I know exactly when I can bet. When the line is up, I can bet it, and I'm going to get my bet. And 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 my job is to expand that window as much as possible. It's called availability. I want to make that window as, as large, you know, I want to offer that bet absolutely as often as I can without getting killed, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that. And to me, that's the that's the idea. And 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 I think a, a large operator will see the competitive advantage of building their product around that promise, and and how they can use that competitive advantage to basically club their 
competition. And th- this is not theoretical either. Like, like, the, like I'll just tell you, Bet365 and FanDuel understand this. Bet365 and FanDuel both are actively trying to make this customer experience like I'm describing. They're at, if you look at their literature and you also look at the way the site behaves, they're actively working toward making their site behave more like this. They want the rejection rates low. They want the delays low. They, they don't want to be turning down bets. They know that there's some flaws in their system. And so, you know, but, but, but you know, I, I, I do think this is going to be where the industry goes. And I think they're going to need, you know, need a solution like ours. If they're not FanDuel, if they're not Bet365, you know, maybe they, 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 they want to focus on product and they want to say, you know what, Ed, Deck Prism, you solve this problem for us. You know, and and we'll just stop worrying about it. You could just solve it for us, and we'll say, "Yep, we'll solve that problem." You could have a product that's low rejection rate out of the box, and offer that to your customers and and tout that and say, "Hey, look, you know, you you, you get every bet." You know, because because everyone has that experience, right? Everyone has that frustrating. Right, experience. but I I'm still cynical that it's not enough of a value proposition to the to enough of the public. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're right. Because they're stupid. Because it's stupid. Because they're stupid. <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. You, you, know, you know how you know you know how much how much how much pulling teeth you have. I mean, not necessarily me, but I know people that do sports betting content to just get people to line shop. Just right. like like if you're gonna if you're gonna bet on Broncos here on the money line and it's oh on FanDuel it's plus one seventeen and on DraftKings it's plus one twenty and on BetMGM it's plus one twenty two. Go and bet at MGM and put it at plus 22. And you know, the answer is, it's like, well, I already have the DraftKings app open and I already right. have $50 in there. It's like, like, dude, if you're not going to get five cents just for just like, like, what is right. any of this going to matter? Like what, like what like you said, what is the, oh, well, I get to approve my bets quicker. Like how is like, th- right. these are the people that like, oh, there's a hundred dollar free bet on Tiger Woods this week for the masters. I'm going right. to be betting golf on that site. And like, they don't realize they're betting, yeah. you know, Webb Simpson at at plus eighteen hundred when the real line is plus thirty two hundred that you could get literally on the next app that you could click on your right. phone. Right. Like so that that that's yeah. Ed. It's not that I don't believe in what you what you're doing. Right. It's that I. I but yeah. I'm this way I mean, with we'll everything. I'm this way with politics. I'm. No, with, we'll see. There's there's you know, I, I, there's, I there's so the much dumb money real. because there's so I, many dumb people. There, there, I, I, I definitely think there is obviously a lot of merit in what you're saying. You know, I, I think that 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 a lot of people will not notice, and I, and I think it's a incremental improvement in the product. But I think you know, in in a industry where differentiation is so difficult, I mean, these products are really similar. You know, you know, what is what is a a bet on the Broncos? Isn't Circa or, isn't Circa like trying to do that? Mm-hmm, yeah, well, our, Circa is one of our partners. So okay. Um, yeah. So, but to me, so, to me, based on what I see in the U.S. sports betting space, it's every Circa is the one that's trying to make that as the value proposition of we accept all acts like kind of that that right. uh, that old school uh, horseshoe type of right. like 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 Binion's will accept any bet. And they're, right. like they built their brand off of like there's nothing that we don't accept. I mean, I think Circa's done an amazing job at branding because. Here you are, you know, telling me about their branding right. on a podcast. Yeah, but right. the problem so is I, I can't bet on Circa because it's not in Kentucky. Well, they're yeah, they're they're not in your state yet, but you know, they're they're gonna expand. You know, that's but that part would of be for someone like me. That would be the like that. But yeah, would, if for it sure. gets like, like no, I want to see what's going on on Circa first. But exactly. I know I'm not the normal person. My friend down the block or something is just like, oh, shiny new app deposit bonus odds right. boost. No, for sure, I and agree. then they end up betting there all the whole time. Understood. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, it's it's a little bit of an uphill battle, but I, I do think there's put it this way. I think there's a ripe niche for someone with Circa's approach in this country. Are they going to are they going to be the number one book in in three years? I mean, you know, it's it's a big uphill battle. I don't want to say no. And again, they're my part. They're our partners and we're trying to help their product be the best possible. But um, but is there is there a place for for that type of operator? I 100% think so. Is there a way for a business like that to be profitable? And 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 more to the point is think about Circa, right? Circa is you know I I don't want to like I I only want to say I mean I I really only have nice things to say about them, but but like like 
you know, they're they're not spending a billion dollars a year on marketing. <laughs> they're not, you know, they, they they their branding is guerrilla marketing almost, right? Like, and 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 to me, if if they can demonstrate, hey, look, we can we can build a viable sports betting business in in multiple states in this con- country with this model and our guerrilla branding and our our you know, without spending all this money on marketing and player acquisition, if we can carve out a niche, I mean, I think they've really proved something, you know, even, even if they can get to 5% of market share. I mean, think about, think about what that means. If they're saying I can get to 5% market share on the power of my product and brand with no marketing spend, like a drop in the bucket marketing spend compared to all these other companies, right? And, and, and they're saying just on the power of product and brand, I could build a business where nobody thought it was possible, right? So to me, that's to me, that's a that's a you know, I think the ceiling's bigger than that for 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 that project. But but like if you think about it in that way, like that's that's a good business. I mean, think that's a great business. If you can if you can capture five percent of the American sports betting market without the marketing spend. I mean, that's a great business. Or you know? are you I becoming mean, acquisition target. Well, yeah, I mean, and think about it. I mean, a lot of these companies are still losing money post marketing spend. I mean, these are not profitable companies post marketing. At the moment, they're unprofitable. Well, well, don't you don't you think that uh, don't you think the end game is really casino? I I mean, people say that. I I think it could be. I mean, it, I I think when, when you can is... have a sport when when they, they could know that they could have a a twelve percent hold a slot machine in everyone's pocket. Like I mean, we, we both know, we both we both know that in 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 Las Vegas in in actual land based right. casinos. The sports book is a loss leader. Is not that's not a revenue generator. That's to bring in whales so they play. You know, I mean, they, they make money, else. but yeah, they're, they're, you're, but it's you're a, but it's not it's the main amenity. revenue driver. It's an amenity, and it's been treated that way in Las Vegas for sure. Right. You know, I, I I think sports. I think sports. I think this angle. I think there's a lot of truth to this angle. I think it gets like taken to the extreme. I think you know people say. Like I think the sport, I think a sports book, a well-run sports book, is a good business. Period. Right. That's what I think. Right. You know? But we're dealing with companies that also want to like. It's just like when people said when the sports betting stuff happened. Oh, they're going to forget about DFS. It's like no, they make right. DFS is a good business. Right. Now, are they going to focus on it? No, but it's right. not going away. In fact, right. I think the the more that DraftKings and FanDuel market their sports book. The more liquidity we're going to see in DFS, one hundred percent. So, so 100%. like I, the the whole sky is falling. Three years ago, oh my God, DraftKings is no longer a DFS company. They're going to shut down the games. It's like the rate. Oh is, yeah, well that was that was clearly the not the right. Right, it's fifteen percent rate. It's a yeah. it's like it. They've they've perfected their product and they've they're right. innovating stuff on the DFS side, but they've had such a su- they've such a head start in DFS and they are and it's it's just another thing. That if you come into DFS, well, now you could play the sports book. Now you could be in the casino. If you come in the casino, it's, it's the same thing as, as a land, a brick and mortar casino is there's multi, hey, there's multiple ways for us to make money in Las Vegas. Sometimes, you know, you have the Bellagio shops and the right. Caesars shop. Like these are, this is how we make money for people that don't want to gamble. Like exactly. just like every part exactly. of the floor space. And that's how, and that's how all these that. companies look at it, right? They want to have these different verticals and they want to have something that appeals to everyone and they want to be able to cross sell stuff. Right. So hundred percent, you're right. I mean, I mean, I mean, every one of these companies, the moment they're allowed to open casino in a state are going to do it for sure. You know, that's, that's, that, that, there's there's no gonna, there can be some fights there's on no that. There's no question. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, I, I think it's reasonably that there should be. I think that there's a, a real, you know, social discussion to be had about what the place of, you know, some of this gambling, you know, industry is in people's lives. And no, I know, think there's going to be more of the fight from the more of the. The, the Indian tribes and the casino oh, well, companies. Oh, too. I mean, there's those politics. Who gets to run the casino and who's... Yeah, well, what you do know, you... What do you uh, lastly, before... before Only because you're more involved in the industry than I. I'm like, you know, because I'm not sports betting. I'm keeping in taps of it, of the fact that, like, the state by state... Like, the stuff like like going on in New York. Like, what's right. uh, what's up with this, this like, in Oregon? Like, right. where, where essentially they're... They're creating monopolies, right? Instead of like just it, it. It always it always amazes me, especially being especially being a progressive. More, I would I would consider myself progressive. That we okay. have, uh, like people that want you know free market people are like, well, no, we need we need 
just one platform and four skins and like like right. well, why why can't you just here's the license fee and just if if Pete's Pete Sportsbook wants to open up as long as they right. can afford the license fee and then what they end up doing with the license fee they make the license fee so expensive that it pretty much prices out any new competitors like correct that's not a that's not a free market it's not yet it's being no, pitched it's as that yeah it's not it's 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 you know the different states have taken different approaches i mean you know the 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 blessing and curse i guess is this always gets pitched to governments as you know tax money you know this is going to bring in tax revenue either through the licensing fees or through direct taxation of the of the of the stuff and 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 they say hey you should you should legalize this because tax revenue, right? Not because hey, this is a thing the the the, the people want to do. You know, this is a, a a business that that the people of your state want to deal with, and and they want a safe place where they can do it, and that has rules and that's fair, and you know, like that's not the angle. The angle is not hey, this is a thing the people of you know, Oregon want to do, let's create some fair rules and create, you know, and, and have some competition and, and may the best company win. It's always pitched, Hey, Oregon, wouldn't you like some more tax money? Right. And but then, is and that then, the reason why they're, they're a lot of these states are treating it more like they need to set up a monopoly because it's easier to regulate. They think it'll thing. maximize their tax revenue. I mean, the, the, the governor, oh, so of basically, York, so the, 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 these legislators don't, don't know anything about sports betting. Are, are they saying that they think that they can maximize their tax ma- revenue with a monopoly because they could just offer such an inferior product New with York, it only New being y- the only one that you could New York, essentially uh, uh, New York, essentially uh, said that that was their thinking. Really? That, that they want to make a bad product that only, no, but not that's the a, only not one a that bad you product. No, 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 not a bad. Well, they're, 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 they're I, I think, correctly uh, asserting that, well, if there's enough competition, then they'll get the benefits of the, the. I mean, part of the problem is, okay, well, you can compete in New Jersey. So all the competitive forces that drive creating better product, better better customer experience, better everything happen because there's a New Jersey and to compete in. And then New York says, well, we'll just take all the all the benefits of the competition that happened over in New Jersey next door and we'll tax them <laughs> and then set up a monopoly. Does that make sense? So like, I think there's a little bit of a free rider thing going on between states where they're saying, yeah, you go ahead and have all the competition you want, New Jersey. We're going to maximize our tax rate and, 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 and while still enjoying some of the benefits of the competition you have next door. So I, I, I think that's, I, I think it's a little short-sighted the way they look at it. I, I certainly think it's cynical, a little cynical. I, I, I don't like that they look at it that way. Again, I I think the way they should look at the whole industry rather than as like a grab for more tax revenue, you know, is that they're, that's the reason why this is allowed is because this would be not allowed except now we can make tax revenue. Now it's allowed. I think it should be viewed like every other business. This is a thing the people of the state want to consume. This is a type of entertainment they want to consume. There should be rules. We recognize that there that this is uh, uh, has pitfalls. You know, there's gambling addiction. There's you know there, there's there's ways that the operators could be behave in unfair ways. There's unfair practices. There's you know and and view it more from a consumer protection perspective. Mm-hmm. Right. I would love to see regulators say, look, this is something we want to make available to the people of our state, and and we're going to try to make the safest and fairest. A product possible available to our customers from a, from that perspective that that in my experience is not really how these discussions tend to go well, that's politics and, i mean right just like there's never going to be any federal legislative you know law based on right. this because nothing ever gets done federally right so i you know i mean my answer is i wish they put more emphasis on consumer protection and 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 less emphasis on on exactly how to maximize their tax revenue. Do you do you think these I people I, do you think these people understand sports betting enough to do consumer protection? No, that, that's the well to do well that's the thing is to do consumer protections. No, but I think they could learn. I I think there's there's actually companies that have sprung up that are basically offering their services. They say we're the people who know about sports betting and we're going to teach you, you know, light register you know, legislators and, and regulated markets, you know, how to have a fairer product. You know, there are there are companies, third party companies offering these services, offering, you know, responsible gaming services, you know, basically uh, offering, you know, integrity monitoring services, offering, you know, so I, this is this is this 
if if the states wanted to make that the emphasis, I think the resources are available. And if they aren't today, they believe me, they would spring up. I mean, if any state government was willing to pay you money to 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 teach them how to, you know, build a fairer, better marketplace, like, yep, people would be there to accept that money and do a good job of it, I think. So I, I don't think any of this is beyond, you know, it just has to do with priorities, I think. And, and you know, it, it, it is kind of a shame to me where the priorities seem to be sometimes. And, and, and it, you know, as you said, it's politics. It is what it is. You know, New York's going to do whatever New York's going to do. And, and I, you know, I, from my perspective, from where I sit in the industry, I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a small, small pawn in, in that game. And, and I just kind of play by the rules as they're presented to me and, and, you know, do the best job I can to build, you know, something I think has value. So. Well, I think, I think, but I think a lot, a lot of it comes down to education. And do you, do you think that the American, like, we know the difference between like the American model and the European model, right. like, like the mindset, do you believe that let's take a look, let's, if we took a look at sports betting 25, 30 years from now, right. Do you, do you believe that I believe personally that there will be way more, more innovation in, in the American sports betting market than there's been anywhere else no, I, in the 100% world? I think so. Hundred percent. Oh, only because yeah. I, I, I just, I just don't think, like my my big bet, my big bet, if you want to call it, of that, I will eventually be transitioning from daily fantasy sports into peer to peer based betting type game, similar to like yeah. the Westgate Super Contest or the National right. what the DK. It'll be some type of thing. You take nine bets, and they'll be obviously just like that aces game that you said before yep, yep, yep. there'll yep. be some type of thing where you put together yep. a betting card of of these 50 bets and i could put together a betting card and we all put in five bucks and the winner gets a hundred thousand and yep. then i could go well these people are going to do i could see what people are going to do and then you take advantage of the game theory 100 percent. i think that's going to happen and 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 i i agree with you i think this is this market is going to be a, a a hotbed of innovation especially over the next five five to ten years but I, think I think there's more money to of- me to me in the future there's more money from my perspective, at least maybe not big, big money, but the money, if you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year type of thing, right. there'll be more. If, if I wait 10 years, DFS is still going to be here and I can still make money playing yep. DFS that I could get, I could be the early adopter to those types of games. I, I a hundred percent agree. Yep. Right. And then I don't have to worry about uh, beating uh, money lines and prop bets and trying to outwit Correct. the sports book because Correct. those games, the sports books aren't going to, they're taking their, rake and Correct. it's it's a skill game and then there you go yep. and and then we're off to the races and it, it that may not be the major thing like i know that in that that type of game will be the subset of of right. the sports book but it'll be the type it'll be the type do you want to turn the to me the, the the value proposition of dfs has always been number one do you want to take a small amount of money and turn it into a lot of money well, there's no other way to do it with, without large field GPPs, and there's no way right. to do it in sports betting. Why do th- Why do you think people make five dollar twenty leg parlays for n- no fucking right. that are that are ridiculous to possibly right. win? That right. as long as the platforms can come up with a format where it tur- you could turn a little bit of money into a lot of money, right. people are going yep. to be attracted to that. And if they could remove themselves so they could guarantee themselves profit by making a skill based game. There will always be the top one to five percent that could beat it and not get banned for beating it. Exactly. Yep. And I, I think more of that's coming. I, I agree with you. I think I think more of that's coming. I think poker's coming back. I I think we're gonna see a little bit of a renaissance with that with that type of game. And um a hundred percent I think it's gonna be driven. I mean, the I think people are really underestimating exactly how much investment dollars are pouring into this industry right now. Um, you know, it's it's mind blowing. And there's lots of smart people who are picking up those dollars and trying to build cool stuff. And I, I think we're going to see a lot of cool stuff come out of that. So the logic of sports betting, you could get it on Amazon, anywhere. Uh, you've been doing well with sales. I mean, like, like yeah, it's fine. I mean, the, the the goal of the book wasn't to make a ton of money from sales. It was it was to it, it was it was it was to it was personal branding, and then it was also just educational, like. 
trying to, you know, like we get, we get, we get calls sometimes from regulators where they want to buy a copy for everybody in the, you know, in the pick a state. I don't want to name one because, you know, but like, you know, in the, you know, East Dakota, you know, right. uh, like, <laughs> like, like gaming board. Right. And they say, we want to buy a copy for everyone. I mean, to me, that was, that's ideal. I love it when I get those emails. I was like, yes, please buy a copy for everyone in your department, have everyone read it just so you understand the industry a little better, you know, uh, and and so that's why we wrote it was was for that. But yeah, it's been selling. I, I, well. I, I, I can't if you're a sport if you're currently betting on sports, and you're listening to this. Now, obviously, if you're listening to this, you're probably you're probably sharper than most uh, in general because you're probably playing DFS well as well. Right. That if you're if you just dabble in sports betting, you're like okay, leisurely here, leisurely there. I guarantee you, if you read the logic of sports betting, it's going to be one of those things. Like I, I say it with, I know I'm going to beat my own, you know, pat myself in the head, in the back and whatever about, you know, people that email me that say, I've been playing DFS for five years and they were the types that they thought it was one game, but after right. listening to the course, they finally realized it's some other game. Right. To me, that's what that, that's what that book does of, right. oh, I thought all this stuff about sports winning was about this. And it turns right. out it's about this. Right. And either what that's going to do is <laughs> yeah. make you stop fucking sports betting. Uh, exactly. Right? right. Or at least make your dollars go further or make you be able to make, you know, be your money or turn. And you could, I mean, just understanding yeah. how the market works. Then you become, if you're the smart type of person, you're now going to be creating models and scripts and, and you're going to be it's, one of those people trying to beat the books. I've, I've actually gotten that feedback from the book way more than I expected, which is people read it. And then they wrote me and they said, your book is amazing. And it taught me I have absolutely no business anywhere near sports. <laughs> I said, well, that, I mean, I'm, I, that's perfect. I mean, I'm that's glad the, that's the account. logic of sports betting. That's, it, that's, it's like the I, war, it's like war games, right? Yep. Yep. The best choice is not to play. Yep. It's a funny game. Yeah. Okay. So Ed Miller, Ed Miller poker on Twitter. Thanks for uh, coming on. We talked about, we yeah, talked about a bunch so of much. stuff and, uh, and uh, maybe I, I know the last time I saw you was in New York a couple of years ago. And yeah. uh, I never go to live. I, I don't try to qualify for live finals or anything. So I don't know right. when the next time I'll be in Las Vegas. But uh, next time in Las Vegas, I'll be betting on Circa. Excellent. Sounds good. So yeah, hopefully, so uh, hopefully I can line. beat your line. I'm going to try to beat your lines. Well, it's, so we it's not our lines in Nevada because because of regulatory stuff. What? Only in not Nevada. So where <laughs> are you? Colorado. Colorado. Okay, so I need to go to Colorado yeah. and and so yeah. if I win money on Circa, Colorado. If I so you're telling me if I go to Colorado and I win money on Circa, that means that that shows that your product is either I'm extremely smart or your product is really bad. Exactly. <laughs> okay, thanks awesome. for coming on. The logic of sports betting. Go pick that up. Pick that up before you pick up the theory of daily fantasy sports. Most like most people have already that are listening to this have already bought the course, but. uh it, it it'll if you bet on sports, it's the best what twenty thirty bucks, you, you'll ever yeah, spend. twenty bucks yeah that, yeah they, that you'll ever spend so so go do that right now and then uh, then go to the theory of DFS dot com and get the fifteen hour audio DFS masterclass of the theory of daily fantasy sports. <laughs>